Welcome to UCF's moment. The mayhem of game day. A massive turnout. Students seizing the national stage to make pointed statements. This morning belonged to the Knights. But now the main event. Quarterback Mackenzie Milton and the winners of 22 straight still battling for respect face the season's toughest test so far. The challengers from Cincinnati. Michael Warren runs angry, carries a chip. He and the Bearcats have climbed from the depths to 9-1 and one and look ready to stake their claim to a conference crown. Inside UCF's rowdy bounce house, the American Conference game of the season coming up. In East Orlando with Florida's Space Coast in sight. Welcome to UCF's on-campus stadium and welcome to Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart. And tonight's game between the Cincinnati Bearcats and the undefeated 11th ranked Knights of UCF. The biggest game all season in the American Conference from the home of the self-proclaimed 2017 national champions. A marketing move that certainly stirred up the college football world. Welcome, Chris Fowler, Kirk Street, Maria Taylor will join us. This environment is hyped, and we know most of you folks are probably seeing these teams for the first time this season. You want to see what's UCF about? Do they belong in this playoff conversation? They have a chance to make a strong case tonight. Well, after what they did last year and, and it culminating with a win over Auburn in a big bowl game, they're undefeated again. And so there are people out there that are probably saying, what's the fuss? And this is the stage that UCF has wanted. They're playing a great opponent in Luke Fickle's UC Bearcats. Let's get it on. Let's see what happens. Josh Heupel will have his team playing at hyperspeed. He can do that because Mackenzie Milton is such a strong quarterback. The Hawaiian putting up massive numbers again this yeah, year. It, one of the better dual threat quarterbacks. And I think he's really adjusted well to Josh Heupel's scheme. You know, last year when, when Scott Frost was here, it was kind of the old Oregon offense with Chip Kelly. Now it reminds me really of the old Baylor offense with Art Bryles. See how they spread you out sideline to sideline. They kind of force you to make a decision on the safeties. This time the safety comes down to help against the run. McKenzie Milton recognizes that. And look at all that space they create for the vertical passing game. Beautiful throw there to Snetson for a touchdown. The other thing that they do a good job of is they stretch you. You can also run the ball. This time the safety says, you know what, I got to get back. I can't afford to be able to get beat deep. No problem. McKenzie Milton feels that he has a great group of backs. You'll see Killens, number nine tonight here, is Greg McRae, who's come on really these last two weeks. You can see all the space that these formations create. And when you mix in tempo, which you'll see tonight, which we'll have some fun with, and the speed around a veteran quarterback, it makes this offense one of the toughest ones to stop in the country. They say that contrasting styles make fights since he's a different style of football team. You got Luke Fickle, the former Ohio State defensive lineman and coach. He brings a tough Midwestern style. They stop the run, and they love to run it downhill at you. You know, he coached, with, he coached obviously, with Jim Trestle, and when you watch their brand of football, it reminds you of some of those Ohio State teams because they are physical. They are aggressive on defense. They win special teams, and they can run the football. And, and Michael Warren tonight, if UC is going to win this game, Michael Warren's going to have to play play really well and the reason is not he runs angry and runs with an attitude but also if he has success it opens up their play action pass game and then they can try to work the clock and keep McKenzie Milton and all that speed on the sidelines it's kind of a young team they're not used to playing you know hostile building with a lot of energy how will Cincinnati respond because I promise you the Knights are raring to go tonight battle for the Driver's seat, the American Conference, and so much more for UCF and their fans. The Knights and the Bearcats in the Bounce House coming up. All right, thanks, guys. Welcome to Senior Night. And think about guys like Titus Davis, the vocal leader of the UCF defense. He and his seniors endured a winless season as freshmen. Now they're chasing back-to-back -back perfect seasons. On campus, these students used to make fun of the football players. They were the butt of jokes in class. Now they're being celebrated. Pat Jasinski, another tough Georgian, a linebacker. It means a lot. They've been in the deepest valleys you can imagine in college football and now chasing perfection against the Bearcats of Cincinnati. This has been the Nissan pregame rush. Kickoff from Orlando is coming up next. But now we'll look inside Nissan's Heisman House. We're off to Orlando, Florida this weekend. The Bears, he wins! The streak stays alive! Look at that stadium rocking so much. We'll be able to keep our cameras steady. And runs here on the air. Two in a row and don't seem to be 
slowing down at all. Can't see looking, throws down, feels Nelson's in the pool! Touchdown! This is X Sound Full Dario. We don't run from our opponents. I don't think anyone should underestimate Cincinnati and what they bring to this game. If you want it, you gotta watch. If you want it, you gotta watch. We're gonna really enjoy watching Michael Warren run this week. Cincinnati, the heart and soul of the team, is the front four. 30 seconds, everybody. There goes Warren to the house. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Hawk that ball, secure it. Let's go take it one play at a time. Everybody's got a job. Everybody's got a role. All right, all we ask you to do it the best of your ability. We want it more than everybody in this country. And welcome back to this presentation of the American Conference on ESPN. The Knights, led by Josh Heupel, former championship quarterback at Oklahoma, 9-0 in his first season as a head coach. He's with Maria Taylor. All right, Coach, your day started with the excitement of college game day. We just saw the emotions of senior night. How do you have this team focused for the task? Well, I told him in the locker room, let's just be us, compete as hard as we can for 60 minutes, and enjoy the moment. What do you think the statement is that this team can make tonight? Listen, we're just trying to win a divisional title tonight. We're going to go out and play hard for 60 minutes. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Now, Josh sounds ready, Kirk. He, he, it's an interesting thing to take over for Scott Frost. who had a perfect season and put your staff on it, but also don't fix what wasn't broken. It, it takes a, a guy that has his ego in check. Uh, done, obviously, a really good job doing it his way with his own style, and it's working. And the bounce house is jumping. Knights won the toss and deferred. So Alden Knight and Jamal Wiggins back deep to receive the kickoff of Matthew Wright. And the pumped up kicker drives it deep into the end zone. So here comes the Bearcats offense. They get Garrett Campbell, their sixth year senior starter, back after missing five games. That is huge in this environment tonight. Yeah, makes all the calls. Broke his ankle just, for, like you said, four or five weeks ago. The fact he's back is remarkable. We talked a lot about Warren Lewis, number one, their most explosive receiver. But also Medeiros has to do a good job. They're going to see a lot of man-to-man -to -man tonight. Can these receivers win on the outside once they establish that run? The play-action pass game and explosives, a big part of what they need to do to be able to pull off an upset. Desmond Ritter is a redshirt freshman from Louisville, a dual-threat quarterback who took over the job in the third series of the season and injured a comeback victory at UCLA. And the very first play, the play clock wound down. Not enough urgency. This is not a conference with a lot of tough, loud crowds, Kirk. This is very new for a team to deal with crowd noise, frankly. He just talked about it, and Luke Fickles talked about it all week, how his team will handle this energy, not just the crowd, but all the hoopla and all the, the, the noise around their program. And he's got a freshman quarterback on the road. He didn't even recognize the play clock as it was going down. They divide the student section. The students are at each end of the stadium down near the field. It's loud at both ends for the visiting offense. And the right tackle move. Chris Ferguson. For the snap, no start. Offense in the 75. Ferguson, a senior who played no snaps, not a single snap in his career until his senior season. Yeah, he earned his way into that starting lineup. We'll talk more about their offensive line throughout the broadcast, but this is an offense that needs to win on first and down. First down. They want second and six and third to two. They're not built for these kind of situations. Ritter from the pocket. Pressure delivers a throw over the middle. And catch is made at the 29-yard line by Khalil Lewis, the top receiver on this Bearcats team. Nice job by Ritter stepping up. And I still think a UCF defender got his hands on the ball. I think it was Hayes, number six, that affected that ball. It was almost like a knuckleball coming out of Ritter's hands. But he had enough on it. And they're going to review this to see if Lewis got his hands under to make the catch. See, the pressure right there affected the throw. Mm, that ball looked like it hit the ground and aided in the control by Lewis. There's a really good look at it right here. Tight coverage by Moore. Does a good job with that right hand to get his hand on the ball. I thought he had control momentarily with two hands. Then the ball hit the ground and came up. Jack Winter is the replay official on this American crew. 
We'll have to see Kirk if in his judgment the contact was long enough before the ball hit the field and came up. Dave Kataya, as always, alongside as our rules expert. Dave, your take on this. When, the, when he goes down to the ground, the point of the ball moves and it and it uh, red, it loses control. This could be incomplete. That's in a opinion. review. The ball hit the ground. Therefore, it is an incomplete pass. Second down. Right, Kataya is one for one. Well, and, and give, as I said, Brendan Hayes, number six, who plays very hard as a defensive end, some credit there. He got in, didn't get the sack, but affected the throw by, by Ritter and, and the ball ultimately because he had a wide open man, Lewis, coming across the middle. Hayes, who wears number six to honor the sixth ward of New Orleans, his hometown, the area hit so hard years ago by Katrina. Second and 20. Warren goes in motion. Ritter looked that direction, but it's a keeper all the way. And he slides down, takes a big shot. He'll spot it at the 23. A.J. Wooten was there. Luke Fickle jumped onto the field there because of the way his quarterback went down. But I think he slipped more than being hit as he was deemed a defenseless player once he went down. Ritter has gained at 640 yards rushing this year. He's a long strider. He can get out and cover yards in a hurry when he gets space. Third and 12. Ritter has a clean pocket and now tries to scramble for the first down. Chased by Jasinski. And there he is. It's a run to move the sticks after the 39. Uh, you got man-to-man -man across the board except Jasinski right here. He's spying, but he gets out of position. You mentioned, Chris, that Ritter is a long strider. You can see, uses that speed with everybody in man-to-man, -man, with the exception of Jasinski, and he's able to pick up the first down. Remember, they started first and 20, and they pick up the first down. Big-time job by Ritter and the Bearcats. Well, he got 15 on that third and 12. Ritter lost a close competition to the returning senior Hayden Moore, but took over the job in the opener. Coming back to beat UCLA. The offense is keyed around Warren. We talked about him in the open. They call him the truck. 218 pounds, but runs bigger than that. Sure does. And they're going to have to have a big night from him. Ideally, you see, they want to run the football to set up Ritter off the play action. They want to get those linebackers and safeties concerned about the powerful Warren running that ball. Runs angry. Warren, who turned 20 on Monday, owns the single-season touchdown record, as you see, with 18 of them, 17 on the ground. Second and eight, Ritter fires far side. It's a back shoulder catch by Lewis and another first down in UCF territory. I'll tell you, somebody forgot to tell Ritter he's a freshman. All this hostility, all this noise, he looks like he's been out there his whole life. Looks very calm, perfectly thrown football. Great adjustment by the receiver to come back to the ball. The timing perfect there with Ritter, the young quarterback, and Lewis coming back to make that catch. And all of a sudden, the Bearcats are across midfield. Different look now with Ward and the tailback split out. Now he'll motion back in. Warren hit in the backfield, fights back to the line of scrimmage, but that was Jasinski with quick penetration. Uh, th this defense is determined to take away Warren. We keep talking about him. Watch him shoot. I mean, he's not waiting. He is not hesitating at all. They got the same scouting report that you and I have, and Randy Shannon, their defensive coordinator, remember him? Of course, years and years with the Miami Hurricanes as a head coach and defensive coordinator saying they are not going to run the football on us tonight, at least here early. That's what they're trying to eliminate. Second and ten keeper. They'll continue to hammer with that running game with patience, though. They sure will. And they're going to have to, it may be one of these games you have to actually throw to set up the run because of the way UCF is committing to the line of scrimmage on first and second down. Early down pass may become a factor because Ritter is throwing the ball in rhythm and looks to be pretty confident. Been a pretty good offense on third and long this season. They need nine. Warren to the far left of the formation. See the tight man-to-man -man coverage there by UCF. Showing pressure. Falling out. 
Pressure hit as he throws, and it's a high over the head of Lewis. That was just Hitsky in the blitz. Fourth down. Uh, he's very fortunate that he got home. UCF rolled the dice with him coming through here, but watch how Lewis works across the middle of the field. He's all alone. Nobody in the middle of the defense, and because Jasinski got in there so quickly, Ritter not able to set his feet and make an accurate throw. You love the chess match. You, you bring the aggressive blitz, but if he's a split second later, it's a completion in a big game. So James Smith, the left-footed Aussie, one of the best in the world at doing this, kicking it high and deep. And UCF gets a hold from the defense, but will take over for their first offensive possession, pin back. UCF offensive line, Miller is the leader of the group. Dudanik also a senior. Good battle between these guys and that rugged defensive front for you see. And here's the speed you talked about in the yeah. open. Yeah, Adrian Killens can fly. Number nine, Snelson five. He'll be in the slot a lot of the times. Otis Anderson can play receiver and running back. And Chris, I know you've watched this game this week. I did as well. Last year it was a weather shortened game, but eight possessions, seven touchdowns, and a field goal. You see, didn't stop them once. Milton on the first play from the end zone hit falls out in a scrum. Bearcats have recovered it. Touchdown Cincinnati on UCF's first offensive play. We just talked about last year, and this defense has been motivated all week. And they get a, the very first play. Fitz comes up with a sack, and it looked like Clements jumped on top of it for the touchdown. Two veteran veterans, two seniors step up here for this Bearcats defense. Yeah, Malik Clements came around, blindside hit on McKenzie, who didn't feel the pressure. Fitz credited with the touchdown recovery. We'll get another look at it. They're going to replay to see where exactly the ball was recovered, but that's that's yeah. very clear cut. Yeah, Clements was with, that did come up with the hit, blindside. Milton never felt him, does a good job knocking the ball loose, and 51, Fitz jumps on top of it for the Bearcats touchdown. We talked about the challenge of this Bearcats front. They got athletes across the board, inside and outside. Here's our progressive pylon cam. Ball is already out, sitting in the end zone. 51 sees it, fits, jumps on top of it. What a difference a year makes. This UC defense, probably there, they've improved the After most the review, as a team. Is this the field is confirmed. There's a touchdown. Not a defense that takes it away a lot, and UCF not a turnover prone team crew. that's just their third fumble all season just the eighth turnover and and you mentioned you cincinnati not doing a good job creating turnovers they're 105th coming in tonight only recovering four fumbles on the year in the first play they come up with one for a score and cole smith misses the conversion just his second miss of the season so cincinnati's lead is still six nothing but what a start after the two penalties, they move the ball long enough to put field position, good punt, and then the strip sack and touchdown. Aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear. When you put in the hours, the reps, and the heart, nothing can keep you from being blimp-worthy. Goodyear, more driven. Now, this whole week has been about UCF, and you know, we, we talked even this morning on game day about the, the respect that they, they want, the respect that they feel that they need to receive on a national level. I mean, that's really all. We, it's been more focused on that than who they're playing. And even some of their own players and coaches have talked about this is a big stage and, and what they've wanted. And, and uh, you know, they'll, they'll get dialed into this game and get ready to play. But you see clearly a motivated team in the early going here. That's the risk of this offense. You, you drop back, your quarterback sets up very first play in the end zone. Ryan Jones to kick it away. Talked about Adrian Killens there. Very small but very fast receiver. He'll have a chance at this return from the 10. Flag comes in. Killens still running. Another flag. He's loose. You can see the speed. You can see what a threat he is. This return is going to come back, but number nine, very dangerous with the football. Yeah, there was a hold there by UCF. You can see the flag come in right away. During the return, holding six of the receiving team. Ten-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, wide receiver Tristan Payton. This grabbed a, a Cincinnati Bearcat 
man that was coming down to cover the kick and just threw him. Killens is a guy who's twice the 200 meter state champion in Florida. They don't mess around in the state with sprinters. No, no. He's run more than 23 miles per hour. They put those GPS things. That, that is fast, folks, oh. with the, in a football uniform. Ten, a 10 to 100 meter guy. And you, you could see how badly he just wants a little bit of space to try to get out there and outrun anybody trying to chase him. But the special team's mistake backs up the Knights of the 14. Otis Anderson, who's a hybrid, excellent at running back and wide receiver. He's in the backfield. Milton play action, zips a high throw, incomplete. He was off the hands of Dredrick Snelson. I thought Marcus Freeman, the defensive coordinator for, for the Cincinnati uh, defense, and, and Luke Fickle made some interesting points to us this week. They said, as much as you think about their speed and the quarterback Milton, end of the day, they still want to run the ball. We've got to take away that run game. Play action again, and a miscommunication. Snelson was cutting inside. Milton threw it outside quickly. It's going to be third and ten. And part of the reason he had to get rid of that ball is Cincinnati bringing pressure, brought both their linebackers, got into the face there, and, and helped force Milton to have to throw that ball before he was ready. A lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage out there. That's what this offense does. See him space sideline to sideline. Defensive backs out there on their own. Greg McRae, the running back, split wide to the right. And once again, pressure. And Milton's not going to escape. Dropped by Cortez Broughton, the senior defensive tackle from Georgia. But nice job here of getting pressure. You'll see the pressure from the outside forces him to step up. And eventually, Cincinnati gets home to affect this offense. Four snaps, and Cincinnati almost has UCF discombobulated right now and completely out of rhythm. Textbook way to handle a juiced-up crowd as an underdog on the road, and now you get the colorful Mac Loudermilk. He's made a name for himself on social media with his colorful celebrations, just trying to get this punt away. And the lefty with a short boot and will bounce and go backwards and finally be down inside the 35-yard line. So the Bearcats of a defensive score take over in plus territory, just a 30-yard punt for Loudermill. Saturday Night Football on ABC is presented by Walmart. Light up Christmas at Walmart. And in part by Nissan, innovation that excites. Travis Kelsey wrapping up his Bearcats career, big season in 2012, and Kelsey and the Chiefs, tremendous matchup on Monday Night Football on ESPN. They get on Todd Gurley and the 9-1 and one Rams. Monday Night Countdown at 6 o'clock, and Chiefs-Rams at 8.15 on ESPN, almost. Almost happened in Mexico City, they shifted it to yeah. L.A., and now the Bearcats, Kirk, take over at the 35. UCF showing a little bit of a different look. You see the two safeties back here a little bit deeper. Not as crowded near the line of scrimmage. Warren has the edge. Stiff on actually a physical tackle. Great job by Nate Evans who won that battle. Yeah, this, this play is designed. You see the tight end coming in there. Deguagra picks up a block, but he bounced it. He just running the grass. But you're right, Chris. Nice job by Nate Evans. I thought he might have gotten up around the face mask, but he didn't. Grab the jersey high and pulled him down. Warren grabbed the defender's face mask, actually. Yeah, got away with that. You're right. Three-yard gain, second and seven. Five receiver look. Ritter delivers quickly. It's a short, low throw. Caught by Dewar, the tight end. It'll be third and short. One of the things Desmond Ritter will look at is the same thing we've just talked about, is that the depth of those safeties and how many safeties are back will help dictate whether they're going to end up trying to run the ball or throw. Hold up the three fingers on the third down play here. Marginal field goal range for the Bearcats if they don't convert this. The Ritter's legs are factor in these situations. Warren, power run, first down inside the 25. Evans stopped him, but the Bearcats move the sticks. Zone read play, and mention Ritter because he's such a great compliment. If you lock in on Warren too much, he can pull that ball out and get around the corner. 
And that's where they want to be, those third and manageables where they stay on schedule with this offense. Keeper, Ritter, knocked down at the 21. It's a potent combo, isn't it, though? Yeah. Warren Ritter running game. Yeah, J just talked about how he can pull that out of there in the defensive end that time. Hayes collapsed down on Warren. And he is not afraid, obviously, to run the football. A young man out of the Louisville area, played at St. Xavier High School. Kind of a dual guy, runner and thrower. And with that size at 6'4", he will surprise you with his speed. Ritter takes a shot for the end zone. One-on-one -on -one battle incomplete. Trying to get it to Jay Sean Jackson, the speedy true freshman, and Richard Causey was in coverage. What's great about this game tonight? You're seeing a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Who's going to win these battles? Really good coverage by Causey. What you missed there is he took a little peek. He peeked back over his shoulder. He knew the ball was in the air which allowed him to kind of time up and when to try to throw his hands up to distract the ball. Another third down. This time the Bearcats need seven. UCF showing that blitz look again, but they back out. Ritter has the ball batted down at the line. Fourth down. This time they don't necessarily bring pressure. They do a good job of mixing it. Like a little twist up front. And you'll see the freshman, 58, Charlton, knock that ball down. Right there with the right hand. A true freshman, Randy Charlton, out of Miami. Cole Smith, a little bit erratic this year. 5 of 10. Pickle still has confidence in him. This from 38 yards, trying to... Make use of the short field. And he has hooked it. Missed it wide left. So given a short field, the Bearcats can't cash in. And the kicking inconsistency from Smith continues. Right, Matt, thank you. UCF's run four plays, two sacks, and two incompletions. So, trying to get a little running game going with Adrian Killens. Maria? Well, Chris, right now the Cincinnati defense is very confident on the sideline. Remember, the defensive coordinator, Marcus Freeman, said they want to be aggressive and make UCF react to them. Now he's saying next play, stay focused and calm right now. Well, UCF went one of the tempo, but again, some miscommunication between Milton and the receiver. It's just not, you're not used to seeing Milton uncomfortable almost you know like like he's antsy in the pocket and it's because Cincinnati's bringing pressure you know he's been sacked four times all year coming into tonight tonight he's already been sacked twice in just the, the first possession of the game Milton 0 for 3 and it's third and seven has protection this time and flips it to Frederick Snelson for a first down that's more like it and they'll go fast now just sometimes for a quarterback as experienced as Milton, sometimes it just takes that one throw to kind of get you established. Play action. And down the seam, and the catch is made by Snelson again. They found a matchup they like. As the slot receivers are the most dangerous receivers, and if you've not seen UCF, this is them. They pick up a couple first downs. They're trained to get lined up quickly, and here they come again. Milton is flushed and just flings it out of bounds. You can try to practice against this tempo. Freeman talked about it, but it's difficult when it's happening to you in person. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you, you're trying to make sure you get lined up right. I, I, I keep going back to the Baylor scheme. Th this offense reminds me so much of Baylor, not just the formations, but also the tempo and how they get you on your heels. Well, Milton's pass numbers are way down. They've been relying much more on the running game this year compared to last. Almost 500 yards more rushing. But now it's Nelson who could not collect that. It was a low throw. Incomplete. And it's third down. I mentioned Marcus Freeman. Maria mentioned Marcus Freeman. And Luke Fickle has a defensive background. And... In fact, Marcus Freeman played for Luke Fickle at Ohio State when Luke was a defensive coordinator for the Buckeyes. And 
as the last uh, few years was at Purdue until he came over when Luke got that job and really an up-and-coming star in the coaching profession. And a more deliberate approach from UCF on this third down. Greg McCray, sophomore from Miami, is the tailback. And Milton has plenty of time against the three-man rush. All day to throw. Heaves it downfield and it's caught inside the 10. McCray, the back, got downfield. Well, uh, that's what happens when you rush three and drop eight. And you got a big linebacker one-on-one. -on -one. He just got lost in coverage, and it's hard to cover him that long. And the frenzy to line up. Milton thought about moving north and south for the end zone, but James Wiggins was in his path and knocks him down. Wiggins was in man-to-man -man coverage, and he just rolled the dice. He felt that, hey, he's across the line. I'm going to go get him, and comes up with a big play. He was out there one-on-one -on -one with Snelson. McCray. No, it's a keeper, and Mackenzie Milton scoots in for the touchdown. A very quick 79-yard touchdown drive in nine plays. Started off a little bit slow, and it was almost like once he hit that crossing route, they got that first first down. It just ignited them, and they got into attack mode, which led them to this touchdown. Matthew Wright makes his PAT. That's the difference so far, but you get a glimpse of this UCF high-powered offense after a slow start. They've seized a one-point lead. Quarterback keeper, ninth rushing touchdown of the season for the Hawaiian. Taco Bell celebrating student sections. Action of the fans like the UCF night student section by awarding the best student section of the year. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see if your team made this week's rankings and to see how your school can compete. They got a big student section, 12,000 here. 15,000 wanted tickets. It's first come, first serve. 46,000. That's the enrollment of Cincinnati. 68,000 for UCF. Two massive schools here. McClellan knocked down across the 25-yard line. Talked about Cincinnati's redemption tour. They were a 4-8 last year. It was a bad 4-8. Look at some of the losses. So far, they've been able to pay back SMU, Navy, and USF. Chance to do the same to the Knights tonight. You know, Luke, Luke Fick would tell you, second year, and for all coaches, second year, you see big changes, big improvement. They worked a lot on the kind of the intangibles of their football team, where they, the way they worked out, the way they, they tried to get to know each other better, be a little bit more invested. And it seems to have really paid off with, uh, with the way this team has turned the corner this year. You use the word the brotherhood a lot in Cincinnati. And there's Warren bouncing off tacklers and the man who was Ohio's Mr. Football in his senior year, Toledo Central Catholic. Who's the six? Uh, he, uh, we've all, you know, we, with all the fuss about UCF, us being excited to watch them, you and I, a lot of us here on our crew, we talked a lot about Michael Warren and how physical he is. And, you know, you in Ohio, you win Mr. Football in 2016. There's a lot of big names you beat to win that. He's got it again. Initially, he got some Big Ten offers. Committed to Kentucky, decommitted, then committed to Toledo, and he was won over by Fickle. And look at he joins Robert Smith, who was the Archie Griffin of the Ohio yeah. ranks, won it a couple times. Charles Woodson running back among his positions when he won it. Yeah, and Michael Warren had a great career in high school, and their teams at Toledo Central Catholic had some great teams. But what I love, I keep going back to, I love running backs that run angry, and that's that kind of sums him up. It sure does. Ritter rolling and now will run. He's usually a guy who rolls and throws to his right. That's actually what UCF wants to do is get him going that direction. Maria? Well, Chris, you and Herbie were talking about the fact that Michael Warren runs angry. That's the way his dad taught him he was supposed to play football. Wasn't allowed to play two-hand touch or flag. It was immediately to tackle football. He said he seeks out physicality and wants to run through contact. Love it. Listed at 218, runs bigger than that. He's, he's not going to be in the cover of men's fitness magazine right Come on, he's man. not sculpted Come on, dude. <laughs> Ritter has a high throw and it's incomplete and it's fourth and three uh, how do you get it to Lewis air mailed it he, he missed an open receiver as a flag looks like in the backfield but he, he Lewis to the right there 
playing some zones, finds the soft spot, and, and Ritter just not able to get that ball down. Personal foul, left in the pass. Maybe that's why. Defense number nine, 15 yard penalty automatic, first down. Yeah, that, that's, that's probably why the ball was high. Good push. Boy, they just got in there in a hurry. And Tristan Hill is a big man. Do, do you like the call? Is it aggressive enough to warrant a 15 yard penalty? Um, you know, anytime there's a contact up high, you know, officials now, referees, they're going to make that call. That was, that was really a gray area. Yeah. Anymore, man. I, how do you know what's a foul and what's not a foul when it comes to roughing the quarterback? It extends it the drive. Varies. It varies with each crew. Moves the ball to the 42. Now this time Ritter is going to be trapped. That's Joey Connors, the defensive tackle. Man, their guy's inside can pressure. Well, they also do a twist here that I think affects the communication. You'll see some movement here. See how they move the defensive end that time to the inside. Davis, I think that affected how they're communicating. Connors eventually gets free. That left side of the Cincinnati offensive line we're going to have to get on the same page because right now Randy Shannon finding a way to get through that left side to get pressure on Ritter. It's a colorful group of misfits. They call themselves the Bash Brothers at UC offensive line. Upper hands full so far. Second 14, it's a run. Not much. Brendan Hayes plugged the hole third and long. That formation that they use there might be one that you might see Cincinnati revisit. They had trips into the boundary and it put a lot of the defense down to the bottom of your screen. And if Ritter pulled that, he's running for 40 yards. Instead, he gives it to Warren, but I guarantee you, Mike Dimbrock, the D offensive coordinator of Cincinnati, will definitely want to revisit that where he may pull it. Warren out and the speedy freshman Charles McClellan in the backfield. He leaks out. Ritter is flushed. Tries to run for it and is going to get the first down and more knocked down inside the 25. You can see the long strider at it again. Yeah, we, we saw him do this earlier. Look at the linebacker. Safety actually drops down, but he gets occupied with the receiver there. That's why he wasn't able to come in and fill in and try to be able to stop him from picking up those first down yards. It's his second long scramble yeah. on the third long. Got 19 there. Yeah. Good awareness. Realizes it's man-to-man. -man. There's a lot of room there. He just has to navigate the linebacker who's kind of sitting there in a spy and outran him. 48 first quarter rushing yards for the quarterback. McClellan hit immediately and wrestled down. Quick penetration by Hayes. Ferguson, the right tackle, Chris, you talked about how he hadn't played a, a down until this year. Watch how he gets beat to the inside. He took a step to the outside, and because they were blitzing Grant, the safety, the entire defensive line was slanting, and the right tackle, Ferguson, have to just step to the right and opened up a huge gap hit that time for Davis to shoot through. Warren returns. Second and ten, Ritter takes off, bumped into a lineman, and will be dropped right at the line of scrimmage. And yeah, Cincinnati's getting beat up front. Yeah, they are taking turns on who's getting beat, too. We've seen Ferguson get beat. This time it's Morgan James getting pushed back into the backfield. The left side with Boyd, Trout. They've had some issues up front. A.J. Wooten made that play once again, third and long final minute of the quarter so if you're Randy Shannon you got to be thinking all right guys we're covering them but we've got to keep an eye on the quarterback who's killing us taking off running and scrambling against our man-to-man -man. Now they've been hurt frequently by running quarterbacks this year Ritter has space again and now fires along the sidelines and it's incomplete Catch not made in bounds. Thomas Geddes, the receiver, and it's fourth down. Okay, he's going to be looking to his left, but I want you to watch the tight end work over the middle. This is an area that's been a problem for UCF's defense all year long. Look at that opening right there. He just doesn't see it. Again, he's getting pressure, but he's got to see that pre-snap that there's a shot to be able to take that throw right over the middle. If there's a weakness at UCF's defense, it's over the middle behind the linebackers. Now Cole Smith has missed a PAT and a field goal out there again. UCF should be wary of a fake. It's a 41-yarder. For the lead. It's blocked. 
And the Knights have a chance. They got a wall down the sidelines. Brandon Moore still running. Cuts it back and will be dropped inside the 25. Kicking game disaster for the Bearcats in this first quarter. I think Joey Connors, 91, got his hands on the football right in the middle. Watch 91. Right there, he gets his hands up, knocks that ball away. And a great heads-up play, right in the middle. His right hand knocked that ball loose, and Moore, great job of being aware to pick that ball up and take off. He almost takes it all the way to the end zone. Kind of a slow get-off there. 1.45 seconds. So he took some turf on the kick. It was low, and UCF special teams have set them up at the 22. He's now 5 of 12 on the year. Yeah, hadn't, hadn't made a thing tonight. Two field goals in the PAT. Milton, his pass is deflected at the line. And McKenzie, as brilliant as he is, Kirk, it might be a generous 5'10". They list him at 5'11". <laughs> he's going to have passes batted down. He's a talented guy, throws it at all different angles. Yeah, he sure, he? he sure does. He's figured out how to work around that. And I just love his his, his competitive spirit. I mean, he, he, he reminds me, the spirit reminds me of Baker Mayfield from a year ago, Trace McSorley, that, that type of quarterback. Good comparison. Mm -hmm. He's a quick runner, bursts down to the 16-yard line on the final play of the first quarter. Well, Bearcats jumped in front. UCF answered, but the kicking game the difference. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. The Devils hanging around, Kirk. I like the purple unis. Just want to put that out there. The fan. After the Connors block and the 60-yard return by Bam Moore. It's third and five for UCF on the 17. Milton from the pocket, looped into the end zone, diving catch for a touchdown, Adrian Killens. Well, they create a pick here, or a rub, with the outside wide receiver working to the middle. Gets in the way of the linebacker, White, who's in man-to-man. -man. It's hard enough to stay with Killens to begin with. But now you got to navigate and get around traffic to try to run with him. Well designed by Josh Heupel. Perfectly executed and a nice throw. For Killens, his third touchdown reception of the season. Milton's 23rd consecutive game with the touchdown pass. So many moving pieces, and they're fast-moving pieces, versatile athletes in this offense that can do a number of roles. Absolutely. And I think that versatility is important because, especially with Killens, Otis Anderson, they can be lined up in, in, as a running back. They can be lined up as a slot receiver. It makes it very tough defensively to know what's coming. The special teams have really hurt Cincinnati and any kind of momentum that they had created early in this game. And you mentioned Luke Fickle and the Trestle impact in his career. What did Jim Trestle always emphasize? Special teams, and it's been a nightmare. Well, I don't want to say it's been a tough first quarter for the young kicker, the freshman Cole Smith, but missed PAT, missed field goal, blocked field goal. And we'll show you another look. He absolutely got run over. Yeah, he got hit. Run over yeah. on that return and was, was getting some oxygen he, he, afterward on the bench over there. Yeah, as if it missing a couple field goals isn't bad enough. He gets depleted. Hi. It was into a fetal position he's, there. It's like, leave me alone. All right, let me just. He's wow. Gotta, he's got to regroup. I mean, it's still a long, long game here for the young guy. Can't have a worse first quarter as a kicker than that. And UCF, after spotting since he has 6 0 lead, and now up 14 to 6, and McClellan is hammered hard in the return short of the 15 yard line. Jacob Harris. Made the play. Great job. I was surprised Cincinnati decided to take it out, but boy, they, they had, nobody touched Harris on the way down. That is a big play. So again, another big play for UCF and the special teams. I mean, Cincinnati, they started off good, and in the blink of an eye, this is who UCF is. You know, just like that, boom, 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 and it's 14 to 6 after they couldn't get a, a lot going early. A lot of ways to beat you. We talked about the, the use of the running game. So far, it hasn't been there. Negative two yards rushing with the two sacks, but it's been Milton heating up as a passer. And now Ritter has to answer. And you feed Warren. He's got a crease. 
And he's in the loose, and it was a pre-snap adjustment that opened the door for him yeah, there. Yeah, the safety, Gibson, ended up cheating down late and actually took himself out of the play. And by him coming down like that, and watch, he's right here, he starts to cheat, and he ends up blitzing. They're trying to account for that running game, but watch him take himself completely out of the play and allows Warren to get underneath him and pick up all that grass. Big yards. Ritter rolls and slides down. Still takes a big hit high by Causey. And Causey hit him, but he also got hit from behind there. Looked like by number 12 there, maybe it was Mitchell. Watch that hit right there. That was the big hit. It, Causey hits him. That's fine, but this hit right there. It's a defenseless position the quarterback's in when he begins the slide. No flag. Picked up six and is now chased. Ritter fires incomplete. UCF is accomplishing what they want, so they're getting the roll to his left, where he's not as effective. Yeah, they, they, they right now are doing a good job of just winning at the line of scrimmage and getting him to flush him out of the pocket or get their hands up and affect him and from trying to throw the football. Hill that time just kind of got a, a push right up the middle of that offensive line. You see just trying to weather this frenzy here, this push by the Knights. They need four to keep this drive alive. Ritter's missed his last four passes. Pressure again. Steps up, hit as he throws, incomplete. Brendan Hayes is whipping the O-line. Yeah, it, it, their only chance to throw the ball when you know they're going to throw is he's got to get the ball out of his hands quick or... He's got to be able to get out of the pocket. I'm surprised they didn't they didn't make a call on that, the possibility of a horse collar. Man, he took a swing at his head with the right arm and missed. Otis Anderson back as a returner at the 20. You no, know, Randy Shannon, he promised us he, his defense would bring a lot of pressure today, and they have. Smith, and he flagged down as he boots it. And the catch made back at the 15-yard line. Ooh, hard hit. More flags flying in. A physical return. And check out the multiple flags. And now a scrum, some pushing and shoving along the UC sideline. You could hear that hit. Just want to clarify on that third down that horse collar if it's inside the pocket when they're rushing the quarterback he's good it was a physical tackle then he did try to whack him with the right arm missed yeah discussion of the multiple flags here one came just as Smith was booting it away and then a couple more came out on the return Legal motion on the kicking team moving forward at the snap. During the return, holding number four, the receiving team. Those penalties will offset. We play fourth down. Cincinnati, number one of the country at net punting, 44.1. Smith, 24 year old sophomore from Australia. So you know I like it. But the yeah. Bearcats do a great job covering those punts, too. So Cincinnati defense going to go back on the field trying to contain this UCF offense which is really heated up Milton after a slow start running for one touchdown then throwing for another UCF typically doesn't go after punts they don't get too adventurous on the punt return they're, they're very content to just let their offense take over and do its thing. Man, can he kick it. Drives the returner back to the six-yard line. And trying to get the edge, Anderson. That's a nice return. Spun around and dropped at the 22-yard line. Flag again. Yeah, block in the back there late. 
So that will back up the Knights. Gibson 25. You do see some flags in this conference. Five of the 22 most penalized teams in the FPS are in the American Conference, including these two. There is no foul for a legal block in the back during the play. That's who's from the side. The first down. Timeout. So they pick that flag up. And the drive for UCF will begin at the 22-yard line. Up eight, early second quarter in Orlando. Matt, thanks. That wild Big 12 race. The American game of the season so far. UCF up eight. And they hand it up to Taj McGowan, senior from Hollywood, Florida. The most physical back. And that's not a good sign. It's Terrell Gilbert, the quarter cornerback, walks off for the Bearcats. Uh, tonight he's got a big role. We've talked about UCF being in those four receiver sets. Downfield shot. Milton slings it. Caught. Trey Nixon down at the 25. Man, he throws a great deep ball. A great deep ball. He gets behind James Wiggins. Just who can win that matchup? Remember, we talked slot receivers is where they do most of their damage against man-to-man. -man. That time he got gets behind Higgins. Wiggins. McGowan a short gain, and right away with Gilbert the corner out, they take a deep shot of the next play. Yeah, I mean that, that is a big loss because Gilbert, who started early in the year as a corner, has been playing that nickel spot tonight to help against the speed of the slot receivers and by taking him out potentially a big hit for the Cincinnati defense 47 yard catch by the transfer from Ole Miss Nixon Milton from the pocket flags down and the ball is bounced yeah, Cincinnati jumped there free play offside defense number 92 five yard penalty second down Curtis Brooks in Cincinnati experiencing what a lot of UCF opponents have in this streak things getting away quickly McCray cuts it back and is knocked down short of the marker there nice job by Jarrell White it's a good job by this defense. One of the things that they felt they had to do is just set the edge, keep the edges of their defense, force that ball carrier back inside where they have more jerseys, and that time they were able to do that. Need two. Knights three of four so far in third down. McCray gets to run blitz. And it's going to be short. It'll be fourth down. Need more than a yard here. That was well timed on the blitz that time. And it could surprise the offensive line. Both the linebackers able to get some penetration to slow him down. Get Tristan Hill, big 300 pound defensive lineman who comes in and is a lead blocker. And sometimes more in these short yard situations. A little sugar huddle. And the inverted wishbone, they're going to throw for it. Love incomplete. They were all over the tight end. Colubiali, they love that play, but Bearcats were ready for it. And I couldn't tell if Forrest, to safety, got his hands on the ball or not. The bottom line is good discipline by the Bearcats defense. He's actually back here. He works eventually to try to get open. Look at the Bearcats. They were anticipating this, and it's a good job. Even if Forrest doesn't get his hands on the ball, I think he did enough there to distract him to prevent him from coming up with that play. Libiale is a is a guy that's very agile, nimble, not a big tight end, but a Athlete. talented receiver. Yeah. Bigger it's good scouting. Almost like a, a bigger wide receiver that they use in, in ways where they can take advantage of his his uh, ability to have those great ball skills. So Eiffel goes for it. And the Bearcats a crucial stop. Ritter. Keeps it. It's a good block on the end. That's Taguara, the tight end. It was clearing out some space, and he picks up eight. Yeah, good push out there. I, I, I'm telling you, right now, we expected Warren, uh, Warren, Warner to come into this game, Warren, rather, to come into this game expecting him to run, but they can't get anything established in the middle. So I think the best option right now is Ritter getting out on the perimeter with the ability to run or throw. Oh, Warren, the big truck, hasn't yet gotten in gear. 
He's got her on second and two, and he's got the first down. Number five ranked rusher in Ohio history. More than 7,900 yards. He talked about his brilliant high school career. Still feels like he's been doubted his whole life and told what he can't do. That chip continues into his college career. As you said, runs angry. Got it again. Balls forward for about six. Nice job on the double team and the inside there. Big center Garrett Campbell, who's showing a lot of heart tonight just by playing tonight. He and Kyle Trout on Ohio State transferred. Got a good push that time to give Warren some room to work. That time, Warren tripped over the ankle of the lineman. I almost feel like they had a conversation over there in that offensive line group. They were getting beaten badly early in this game. They're trying to impose themselves. Well, they're, they're going to have to. They're going to have to come together. Their continuity has been a strong point for them this year. But they keep getting pushed back into the backfield. You mentioned how he tripped up over an offensive lineman's feet. It was Chris Ferguson, the right tackle, who at the line of scrimmage got pushed back two or three yards. Third and four. Blitz. Ritter gets it out and overshoots his man. It's going to be incomplete, out of bounds. Lewis grabbed it. Clark was defending, but it's fourth down. That is a tough ball to try to convert on third down. You saw the blitz coming and just took a shot on the edge with that battle. And be it third and four. Surprised they didn't try to get Ritter outside. And with that ability and that threat with his speed to, to have a chance to run for that first down. Not a very high percentage throw there. So UCF will get the football back up eight. And Smith boots it high and deep. And Anderson makes a fair catch at the 19-yard line. 840 in the second. UCF up by eight. Saturday Night Football, presented by Walmart on ABC, is brought to you by Pacific Life. Experience the power of Pacific. The unexpected energy of ExxonMobil. Energy lives here. And Ford, built Ford proud. Shaquem Griffin, such a part of that UCF win over Auburn in the Sugar Bowl. College game day after making its first stop this morning in Orlando. Back to familiar territory, Columbus, to set up Michigan and Ohio State. Buckeyes surviving in overtime. Comeback win against Maryland and Michigan getting an injury today. Chase Winovich, their excellent pass rusher. Some conflicting reports, but Winovich seems possible he'll miss that big game, which would be too bad for the Wolverines. Killens, who caught the touchdown pass, is the back. And he's got it. He's going to be wrestled down. One way to contain his speed is to stop before he gets going, and that was Jarrell White. Jarrell White, who's starting at that, that Will linebacker spot for Perry Young, who got hurt against Navy, and they, they call him just uh, Perry Young, was one of these energized type of players. And big shoes to fill for white that time nice blitz on first and ten to get be able to get into that backfield three yard loss and now milton fires in the slot catch made by gabriel davis his first of the night he's near the marker at the 29. Now th those were those slants he was throwing in the first quarter in the first couple possessions where they were seemed to not quite be on the same page that time they were cortez broughton one of their best defensive players the defensive tackle senior is being looked at. And we'll take a break. They have moved the six. It's a first down for UCF. It's a couple days ago, the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket blasting off from the Kennedy Space Center Thursday afternoon, carrying a communication satellite. It's due east of the stadium, about 39 miles through the pine forests. And it's exactly the same latitude as the 50-yard line of the stadium. A lot of grads of UCF work in the aerospace industry and the Mission Control Center. 
So first half throw and a catch by Killens out of the backfield and came very close to breaking it long before Wiggins corrals him. Right, they got away with a pick here. This one was actually pretty physical by Marlon Williams. And the reason we have a Cincinnati player down is the linebacker right here. Watch this. Boom. Lowers his shoulder. I mean, he he didn't try to hide and use it like a rub route. He actually lowered his shoulder and made a block there against White. Williams is a big receiver, Kirk. He, he goes about 225. Doesn't catch the ball often, but he's effective in plays like that. You know, and again, Killens, he doesn't need a whole lot of room to get out and, and beat trouble for a defense. That was a crack block by the big receiver. So now in back-to-back -back plays, Cortez Broughton, one of the leaders up front, and Jarrell White, one of their top tacklers and linebacker, down on the field. Broughton is up, walking around. Which is good news. He got body slammed. That's why he went out of the game. Yeah. Let's go to Maria. We saw Cortez Broughton come over and he got his left ankle retaped. Um, and we also heard about Gilbert. It is a leg injury, but he should return. They're still evaluating him right now in the locker room, guys. Right, thanks, Maria. Right, the injury is beginning to pile up. The UC defense, Frank, uh, thankfully, went for Broughton, not severe. As White is checked out. Should mention that ball being caught behind the line of scrimmage allowed the big receiver Williams to make that block. He catches that downfield. Obviously, that would be offensive pass interference. Got a few backups now in for this Bearcats defense as the Knights go to work first down. And Killens, he's a guy that they're not afraid to run him in between the guards there at 160 pounds. No, no. I mean, it's it's something you have to make sure that the linebackers and defense are aware that you have in in your uh, your repertoire. He's much better in space, but he, he he doesn't mind mixing it up a little bit. It's good to see a couple of those Bearcats running out onto the field. The guys that were knocked out, White, Broughton, both checking back into the game. Crowd booing, but they were allowed to make that substitute because the Knights changed personnel. Second and eight, Milton. Wanted to go downfield, just checks it down. And Gillens able to squirt into Bearcats territory for another first down. When we talked, Cincinnati felt that we have to stop their ability to run the ball, and UCF has said, no problem, we're going to throw the ball for big yards tonight. If that's going to be your approach, only six yards rushing, 170 passing. Very different look to this offense tonight. False start. Offense, number 78, five-yard penalty, first down. It's the leader of that O-line, Wyatt Miller. They've been such a powerful running team this season. But but I think you, you got to give Josh Heupel and his staff a lot of credit because what they're doing is they're saying, okay, we're great offenses in college football today. They're not just going to continue to, to to run into something you're trying to take away. They're going to have an answer to, okay, you're going you're gonna to load up against our running game? No problem. We've got Mackenzie Milton. We've got receivers. We're going to make you pay for one-on-one -on -one coverage. First and 15. Milton keeps it, and he'll get about three yards back. Yeah, they, they average seven inches more passing than running, 0.2 yards. They, they, yeah. They've got to work on that balance. They that get balance, a, a remarkable 271, 271. Seven a inches difference. <laughs> yeah. Milton from the pocket, zips it across the middle, and a catch is made right at the marker by Snelson. He's been busy tonight. Four-star recruit out of Miami. And yeah, they put you out in space with these formations. And if you look at their look at their wide receivers before the snap, all the way sideline to sideline. Defense barely set. Milton takes a downfield shot to the corner, and it's incomplete. Trey Nixon was close to a catch. Jeffries in coverage. The great thing about using formations like this is it forces the defense to kind of dictate what their coverage is. And he's this one-on-one. -on -one. This is just good against good. Nixon at 6-2, a nice route, uses his speed to get behind the corner. Just unable to connect there with Milton. Ball was fading a bit just off his fingertips. But I mean, look at these wide receivers. There's a wide receiver way up there and way down here. Milton blitzed, gets it out, and threw it over the head of Otis Anderson, who was streaking on a slant. And, and what that does when you have all that separation is look at all the space that's back here. And you're on an island. You've got a safety in the middle of the field, and that's it. That's a miss by 
Kenzie he wants yeah. that back. That was a touchdown. Third and ten. McCray motions out. And Milton, another shot down. Field catch made. Nixon touchdown. Come close the first time, Kirk, just try it again. Yeah, absolutely. Had re three receivers down at the bottom. There's all that space, one-on-one. -on -one. Trey Nixon doing a good job of being able to get that separation. A little bit of contact there early on the route, but just able to pull away with that speed. He beat Noah Hamlin, a backup corner, yep. for a 36-yard touchdown on third down. And Matthew Wright extends the lead. The Knights rolling now. Up by 15. Kick off week 11 with Sunday NFL countdown. 10 o'clock tomorrow morning on ESPN. Some of the NFL's quarterbacks explain where some of the game's most creative audible calls come from. Halle Berry, Obama, Ric Flair. Pat Mahomes, Jared Goff sit down and talk about the Monday night collision of the Chiefs and Rams. And the bounce house is jumping now. Kenzie Milton got the scoring starter for UCF with a touchdown run. Now a couple of touchdown passes. And Knight makes a fair catch. The Bear, Chris Felica, has today's AFLAC game facts. Bear? Everybody knows that the Knights have the longest winning streak in the FBS at 22 games, but did you know that the last team to beat UCF was Arkansas State in the 2016 Cure Ball played uh, down the road at Camping World Stadium there. And Mr. Herbstreit knew that. That was a $100. You collected the Benjamin this morning from Reese Davis. <laughs> I did. And I did I not give him a I was going to say, I, I immediately assume you cheated. I did not. Somebody fed it to you. No. You knew that. Okay. No. Game prep. It goes, yeah, it goes way back. 22 wins, scoring 30-plus in all 22 since then. Five of them in that streak have been decided by a touchdown or less. Warren has it in the flat, and he's chased out of bounds. The close call this year in the streak was Memphis. It was a one-point victory, but there were four times last year, including the victory over Auburn, when the touchdown margin was in play. 16 points, they rallied against Memphis. That was the biggest scare in the whole streak. They had to come off the canvas down in the third quarter by 16. Now, the Temple game was a good game yep. here, too. Warren's got it. And what a play. Short. That sure was. Are you kidding me by Clark? That's a corner. We keep bragging about how tough Warren is as a runner and how physical he is. It's a corner coming up. Comes off his man, gets right upfield and makes that play short of the first down. Love to see corners that are willing to be physical and help out in run support. Tough junior out of Miami. Third and short. Very, very hard to stop Warren in these situations. He just pinballs through the line and fights for much more than first down yardage. Uh, he was stopped close to, looked like right at the first down marker, maybe a little bit short by Nate Evans. Watch 44 in the middle linebacker. Nobody's able to pick him up right there. He's done. He's got him down. But that hard running that time by Warren allows him to get the first down. He slammed down hard and left the game. McClellan replaces him. He's not hitting. He's, He's like, just get, get off, off me. Get off me. Uh -uh. McClellan hit immediately. Jasinski, the middle backer, penetrated. And also, you'll see Hill work on that left side, number nine. He's right here. Watch him try to work through Trout, the guard. I'll tell you, these defensive linemen. Doing a very good job of being able to get shoot some of these gaps, get into the backfield, and even when they're not making plays, they're affecting where these backs have to go, and then Jasinski cleans it up. Warren to get me back in the game. In second and 11. Ritter trapped and dropped behind the line by Titus Davis. Wow, what a play. This defensive line is playing ball tonight. 
Hayes on one side, Titus Davis this time on this side right here. Good job right now, a little spin move, the awareness, anticipating the possibility of a quarterback run, quarterback draw. Get this UC offense at third down and long. Davis, the vocal leader of that defense, one of the biggest voices on the defensive side. Bigger the voices, you come 44,000 of them on third and 13. Got to hurry. Blitz, screen, and the catch made by Jackson, and the speedster turns on the Jets and gets to the Knights 39. Wow. That play looked like it was going to be a sack, and then it's going to be a, a possible loss to he just somehow is able to get to that offensive line that's working downfield right there, just is able to turn the corner, and there's no one there. There's a guy that played running back, quarterback, wide receiver, corner, and safety in high school in Chicago. Big recruit for Cincinnati in the 2018 class. Ritter wanted a downfield shot. Now is flush left, and a flag comes in late in the offensive line pit. He's driven out near the line of scrimmage. That flag was way after Ritter had left the pocket. Holding offense number 75. And now penalty first down. Chris Ferguson just slung a man down, Kirk. Yeah, they're getting so much pressure. He just ends up being frustrated and just throwing into the crowd. He's Becker. Totally unnecessary. Yeah, no, no. Quarterback is on. Yeah. You see, uh, did a switch route with their two receivers at the bottom of the screen. It affected the communication of UCF secondary. And they had an open man, but he was flushed again because of the pressure. Frustrating first half for the Bearcats O line. First and 20. Four man rush. And Ritter delivers. Bobbled and incomplete. On the sideline. Clark was in coverage. I mean, literally every time he drops back to throw, he's gonna he's getting pressure. That time he stepped up and actually throws a very accurate ball into Lewis. Pretty tight coverage there by Clark, but Lewis unable to hold on to that football. Had three chances to catch it. He sure did. Pretty good. Again, Ritter, nice job of climbing in the pocket there with that edge pressure from the freshman, Charlton. But the pressure has been huge, and Ritter just 4 for 13 as a passer tonight. On second and 20, safe throw to Warren. And Warren able to truck for about 12. Tackled by Jasinski. Warren wanted more than that, and it'll be third down. Yeah, they continue to have a lot of success getting the ball out quickly and getting the ball out to the edge. Because of that offensive line losing the battle up front, and they, they've got to continue to try to work these edges. Feeling down 15, he's got two plays to get these nine yards. Well, against that offense, yeah, you can't keep digging yourself a hole. You'll never be able to catch up. UCF gets the ball to start the second half. They remember they deferred the, the opening. Uh, they won the toss and deferred, so they'll get it to start the third quarter. Before this play, Knights took a timeout on defense. Beautiful, crisp night for flying. Aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear. From the end zone to the uprights, nothing comes between a hard work and a goal. Goodyear, more driven. Kickoff for the Bearcats last game. Temperature was 28 degrees. Home against USF. It's a little more pleasant down here. Finally, the humidity has broken in Florida, Kirk. Just in time for your arrival. <laughs> it's, been, it's been like October weather for the last couple of weeks, but a nice evening in Orlando. This is perfect. Beautiful day. So Shannon, a chance to talk to his defense before this third down play. And you figure that Bearcats would go for it here if they don't make it. With the way they're getting pressure on him, the fact that they're in an empty set tells you this ball's going to have to get out very fast. Are they going to have to move him? Because he's not going to have a lot of time here. Pass rushers in the starting blocks clapping their hands, eager to get after the quarterback. Seven men right around the football. They back out. 
Ritter delivers a nice throw, and Lewis has a catch for a first down at the 28. Well, that's a matchup that they love to have. It's actually not man-to-man, -man, but they're going after the linebacker here who's got some space to cover. Jasinski showed blitz, drops, but that's a lot of space to ask a middle linebacker to get way out into the flat, unable to get there before Lewis comes up with that first down. Great job by Ritter making that throw. He made the right choice, didn't he? And now in first down, takes a downfield shot, and it's going to be overthrown. Jackson couldn't get there. There's such a difference between when UCF creates a one-on-one -on -one matchup, not just because of Milton, but because of the design of the play, and it's one-on-one, -on -one and they're, they're getting on top of the defensive backs, and they're downfield by three or four yards behind the defensive back. Those passes downfield that UC's been throwing, it just seems like a hope and a prayer. They're just kind of, it's almost a wasted down. Rashad Medeiros, number 17, is the guy who can be a, a downfield threat and win one-on-one -on -one battles, but he's had a quiet first half. Right, and moved up front. For the snap, ball start, offense, number 75. High guard penalty, second down. Those tackles. Boyd and Ferguson have been beaten off the edge and some mental mistakes. Seems say, I can't hear. I can't hear. Capital One halftime report. Kevin Nagani, Mac Brown, and Jonathan Hill standing by. Update you what's going on on this Saturday evening. Highlights from this afternoon. Not a problem you often have. Crowd noise. Not so, uh, this conference. And Ferguson's a senior and a first time starter. He's never seen anything like this. McClellan is the back. He's got it. And he turns on the speed and is going to be tackled at the 23. It'll be third down and medium as the clock runs inside of a minute. Now let's give, about three timeouts. give Ferguson credit here. Now, drive block. He in the right side, actually a double team. They open up a nice big hole there on his own replay. And you can see McClellan, a great compliment, I think, Chris, to Warren with the power. McClellan has much more quickness. Clock running, not a lot of urgency here. A lot of time, considering they have all three timeouts. Blitz, screen, Warren in space, and he'll scoot out of bounds with just 22 seconds to go. Perfect time, time. Well, they didn't stop no, the clock there. No, no, they got out of bounds to stop it. Perfect time by Mike Dimbrock to call that. Sneaking Warren out of that backfield with those linebackers blitzing. Nobody left out there to pick him up. I'm with you, the clock down at 22. Still have all three of their timeouts. Been effective converting four for four and third down in this drive. Five minutes and 16 seconds. 12 plays. I don't think it's about the kicker. Noisy again. Ritter. Just throws it into the crowd. Did not want to waste more time on that play. Titus Davis again with the pressure. And Randy Shannon not hesitating at all. Davis, Hayes, but also bringing some extra pressure that time. Safe to safety, Gibson. You can work the middle. You got plenty of timeouts to spare here. Their top receiver right down here, Lewis. And another flag before the snap. Before the snap, ball start. Offense, number 70. High drive penalty, second down. They talked about it all week. They tried to prep for it, but you're right. For, for a lot of these Bearcat offensive linemen, this is this is new. Yeah, Boyd's a left tackle. He just moved here. He's a fifth-year transfer from Rhode Island. And the right tackle, we just talked about Ferguson. Why'd you see Rhode Island that way? Well, I'm just saying, like, you, you never seen this kind of speed and pressure on you, not to mention you can't hear the snap count. And it, it takes guys to become seasoned veterans to be able to deal with it. you man. <laughs> Second and 15. Ritter steps up. And can't escape. Davis has got him. Got to take a timeout. Down to 12 seconds. What a first half from these pass rushers for the Knights. 
Yeah, they're, they're coming off the edge and force him into the step. This time they force him to step up into the pocket. It's one thing that I think Randy Shan's group's done a better job of as this game has gone on, respecting the Desmond Ritter is a threat to get out to the left or to the right. So they're trying to force him to step up. And that time he was almost like Davis was waiting for him to step up and came down quickly to take him down. That crook, you just got 12 seconds and the lack of urgency on that sequence a few plays ago when they didn't spend a time out. That's come into play here. Yeah, and, they, and with a, a field goal kicker who's already 0 for 2 and has missed an extra point. Not to mention the UCF offense and how quickly they can score. Luke Fickle, I think, knows he's got to try to take a chance here, try to find a vertical seam with a well-designed play. And they also got to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands quickly with this pass rush. DeGuara, the tight end, slot to the right can be used in these situations. And Ritter dropped incomplete. No, they took it right out of his hands. Just took it away from him. Yeah. You know, I, I think it was Davis may have gotten there first and just knocked the ball out of his hands and Hayes jumped on top of it. Watch 10 coming off up here at the top. Watch him just get his right hand, knock the ball away, and then Hayes on the other side says, that's my partner. You knock it away and I'll jump on top of it. Those defensive ends continuing to impact this football game for this defense. Big stop and it stings for UC. They moved it. 56 yards, five and a half minutes, 15 plays. And they come up empty with the takeaway. First and 10. 29 straight games with a takeaway for this UCF defense now. Some of the Knights headed to the locker room. There's a flag down. Substitution infraction, 12 men in the formation for the defense. Five yard penalty, first down. Yeah, Marcus. Freeman, the defensive coordinator, jumping on Noah Hamlin, the freshman who was out on the field giving the Bearcats 12 the defenders. Seven seconds. Zero, zero, seven. Thank you. So much of the focus has been on this UCF offense, the high-powered attack. The defense has often been gashed. They've had some very rough first halves this season. They have shut out the Cincinnati offense. UC's touchdown coming on that strip sack and the Knights' first offensive play. 21-6 for the Knights. End of the first half in Orlando. Capital One Halftime Report is coming up right after these messages. The biggest game all season in the American Conference. And the bounce house is jumping. Set for the second half from Orlando. Welcome back to Saturday Night Football, presented by Walmart. In this presentation of the American Conference on ESPN. 21-6 is the score. Knights will get the football to begin the third quarter. Welcome back, Chris Fowler, Kirk Kirk Street, and Maria Taylor, and the CFP National Championship Trophy presented it's a by beauty. Dr. Pepper. The yeah. 41st campus this has visited, and you know what UCF fans are saying, just. Give us a chance to be in the conversation, to get in the bracket, to have a chance to play for this. What do you think of the first half? Uh, first half's been a lot of fun. And, I, you know, Cincinnati had a few opportunities to make this game a little bit closer. Special teams obviously not working out for them. And UCF gets the ball to start the second half. You just have the feeling that Cincinnati, if they're going to stay in the game, needs a stop. Or UCF could pull away and it could get could potentially get out of uh, out of hand crowds get the cell phone flashlights jumping around showing the energy they brought all night and the crowd noise and the atmosphere has been a factor against this UC offense it's a pooch kick very short and the fair catch made at the 32 yard line it's Pacific life game summary and UCF that fumble that sack that touchdown against Milton in the first play, then they got it going. Yeah, Cincinnati determined to stop the running game early of the night, so Mackenzie Milton has just been able to light it up, taking advantage of some one-on-one -on -one opportunities out on the outside. And how about the defensive line for Randy Shannon and this defense? You see five tackles for a loss, three sacks, and a whole lot of hurries trying to disrupt the Bearcats' offensive rhythm and flow. 
And now trying to stretch the lead here. This is McCray busting loose. And McCray out near midfield. Back-to-back 100-yard -back games for the sophomore from Miami coming in. He's been the hot hand lately. Running game didn't do much in the first half. And Milton slings it near side to Davis. Lost the football. And it's recovered by McCray back at the 49. Yeah, that's about one way you can hope to try to slow down this offense is ball comes out of the hands there. These two receivers on the outside, Davis and Nixon, big, tall, rangy, powerful receivers. McCray slammed down after a short gain. It'll be third down. You think they really have everything you're looking for when you run this style of offense. The taller receivers on the outside, 16 and 13. The much quicker, fast receivers at the slot. Right now, you, you see Otis Anderson out there, who's undersized but very dynamic, along with Snelson, number five. Tough to match up with all that. And then you got Mackenzie Milton, who can get into a rhythm at any moment. Milton averaging 22 yards on his 10 completions in the first half. Needs five on third down. And an error wow. throw. Nelson was, or excuse me, Anderson was wide open, ball deflected. Yeah, he, he had him wide open and kind of fell off of that throw a little bit. And I just think it's another miscommunication. We saw a few of those in the first half with Milton and some of his receivers. You saw the expression on Heupel's face. He fully expected Milton to take that offense down the field and add to this lead. He sure did. And you could see Milton kind of moving his hand, indicating that he thought Anderson was going to work a little bit further upfield. But they missed an opportunity there to convert. There's louder milk to see if he can dump it down there and give us one of those sandwich celebrations. No, not a real good kick. It's gone off the side of his foot. It wasn't a fair catch scheduled by Knight, but he's dropped by the Knights' coverage team. Maria, what did you learn at halftime? Well, Chris, I was able to spend some time with both coaches, and Josh Heupel says he definitely wants to get that run game going. He feels as though they didn't go to it enough in the first half, and you can kind of see it a little bit with McCray during that first possession. For Cincinnati, though, Coach Fickle saying you have to take your shots if you want to take down the champion, so they hope to be a little more aggressive on offense. But some bad news on their defensive end. Tyrell Gilbert is out for the rest of the game. It's a groin injury. That's a tough loss. Maria, we saw when he went out, Hamlin, 24, the freshman, came in, and they went right after him for a big touchdown to Trey Nixon. Maria mentioned the downfield shots. Ritter just 84 yards passing on his seven completions in the first half. And they feed Warren, who's knocked down for four. Not an offense that's built for big comebacks on the road. Now, they need to stay within striking distance. So, with that in mind, it's a kind of a, a big drive for them. The fact their defense is able to get Milton off the field, their offense back on the field, that, that's that's a win for Cincinnati. We'll, now we'll see what they do with this possession. They had a more aggressive mindset early when this game first started, almost like they're out to prove people wrong, and they lost that midway through the first quarter and haven't been able to get that attitude back. And they feed Warren again. He's knocked down a yard short of the marker by Wooten. He did trail UCLA very early. A couple of fumbles, and they rallied. Ohio U was a tremendous comeback. They had to make some defensive stops at the goal line to preserve that victory. And then there was Wiggins with a big play in overtime. And when you ask Luke Fickle what's the strength of his team, he talks about the grit. Those are examples of where they've kind of learned how to become a gritty team and believe in each other. It's a whole different animal tonight against UCF in, in this atmosphere. Three tight end look on third and one. You know Warren's going to get it. He's a guy that's got six one-yard touchdown runs in the season and two from two yards out. I mean, he's, it's very predictable, but still yeah. tough to stop. It is. You know it's coming. But when he gets going, you know, he and, and this offense, I think, create a confidence in that power running game reminds me of an old back that used to play at Tennessee by the name of Travis Henry that that kind of body and that that kind of makeup is his running style and Warren like Henry he can get out and go he does have a couple long touchdown runs this season as well they're tightening things up here at the line of scrimmage with that press coverage Ritter takes a shot and it's over the head Rashad Medeiros is a guy that 
loves to take those one-on-one -on -one battles downfield and win them, but that wasn't wasn't a good throw. No, Medeiros is matched up here with Causey, who's who's got some good size, is is running with him pretty good. That would have taken a perfectly thrown football that time by the freshman Ritter to have much of a chance at all. You said their downfield shots feel like prayers. Yeah, yeah, they, they're not winning. They're not winning and making it easier for Ritter. And when you play this kind of defense in this environment, you can't just keep banging in there with Warren. They need some explosives. They've got to find a way to hit some big plays. McClellan, the speedy back, is to the left of Ritter on second and ten. Nice split, bolt on the ground. And UCS got it. Joey Connors with the fumble recovery. So you've seen Warren, we've seen Warren, McClellan as a true freshman. It's just a different feel. Ball came in there, looked like a little bit high to McClellan. He's able to handle the snap. See the handoff up high, actually into the face mask there, and that's what knocked the ball out, knocked it loose. And Connors quickly pounces on him. Remember, he had a blocked field goal earlier. Now a fumble recovery. UCF back in business. One of the difficulties in being able to try to slow down UCF is how they spread you out with their formation. McKenzie Milton has been in rhythm at times. Look at all the space back behind when you play one-on-one -on -one coverage. These receivers sideline to sideline. Safety moves to the middle of the field. Look at all the space. It's like backyard football. And with Milton and his accuracy, very, very tough. If you load up to stop the run, leave these receivers on islands, it's tough to match up with them. Bearcats defense got a stop in the first possession for the Knights here in the second half, and now UCF set up inside the 30. Try to get the running game going here in the second half. That was Anderson, not much there. And I respect that Josh Heupel told Maria, hey, we got to get more physical. We got to get our running game going. You know, they only have 27 yards rushing. But if Cincinnati's determined to, to take that away and they're going to give you one-on-one -on -one opportunities, take them and score touchdowns. I mean, the, it's tough to match up with these receivers out there on the edge. And Milton has to duck under exact heavy pressure there from Kimoni Fitz. Fitz just using his hands and his quickness right out here on the edge. Nice job getting the offensive tackle off of him with those quick hands. He pushed Jake Brown and then used the speed to turn the corner. Even that's one way to slow down McKenzie Milton. Third and 17. A little confusion with Cincinnati. Guys running on and off. And now a flag comes in. If you don't watch a lot of games in the American Conference, one thing that well start. is lacking Offense, in this league. Number 77. Five yard penalty. Third down. And it's no secret, is a blue chip offensive lineman. I mean, very often you see teams try to mask that, get the ball out quickly, Kirk, but you would agree the D lines oh, yeah. have a big edge here. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, tonight, you, you've seen these defensive linemen living in the backfield, and especially with UCS defense. They played very well up front. Milton escapes. Trying to get the field down. down hard. Yeah, he's just Jay trying to get Gilbert. some of the yards back in that third and very long. White with the tackle, and Gilbert is back in the game. Sure is. Limp it off, trying to. Boy, oh boy, he's playing through some pain. Look at that. Didn't even raise the right arm there. Oh. No. He had a groin that he was dealing with as well. So here comes Matthew Wright. This is a yard short of his career long, the all time scoring leader in UCF history. It's just one on the season, but this is drifting and it slides wide right. Kick is no good. So you see. After the fumble, rises up on defense, and the lead is still 15. Saturday Night Football, presented by Walmart on ABC, is brought to you by Samsung QLED TV, the official TV of ESPN College Football, and Northwestern Mutual. Spend your life living. The parade of coaches who have yeah. the helm of the Bearcats program. Tonight at 7 Eastern, or Tuesday night on 7 Eastern on ESPN. College football playoff top 25 rankings. Reese Kirk and the guys will break it down. Rob Mullins, the committee chairman, will step in. Rick Minner was a head coach there in Cincinnati for a long time, and Mark D'Antonio helped him kind of go to a different level. First carry for Tavian Thomas. 
and he's knocked down. Kirk, if this were a hockey game, you want to spark your team, turn around, you bring out your biggest fighter. And that was Morgan James, the Michigan. Well, I hope he's Metro in a dark Jets. jersey. He's in the dark jersey. Okay. He's going to get the better of his opponent, and this is the result of it. Apologies there to uh, man that took the brunt of that. Jerry Rank didn't expect to be lit up on national television, but he's a 28-year-old former pro hockey player, Morgan James. And he's a tough dude. His teammates were aware of that fight, but I showed a few of them the video they hadn't seen, and they said, yeah, that, that fits. He, well, you're not scrapped with this guy. He needs to spread spread some of that attitude around the rest of the offensive line tonight because they have, they've kind of had things handed to them tonight from UCF. By the way, we've got another back in, Tavian Thomas, a, tr a freshman, number five, Couple nice runs here to pick up a, a first down. Yeah, the truck, the workhorse. Michael Warren being looked at by the athletic trainers over there, clearly in some pain. Then McClellan just had the fumble, his last carry. So now Thomas, out of Dayton, a freshman, still learning. He's raw, but he's a tough physical dude. Well, you're at this point in the game. You, you, there's been some. It's been a physical game. You, you're looking for healthy bodies and some fresh legs. That's Gilbert who came back from a groin and, and actually took a shot we looked at one of his own players hit him in the shoulder and he's trying to fight through that pain now it's Thomas again here's what you're talking about Kirk we watch the collision between the two Bearcats defenders yeah play. And, and he does a good job trying to get to the quarterback that's a good hit and that hit right there from Jarrell White Unintentional, but here. hits him on that right shoulder. Got up underneath that shoulder pad. So Cincinnati with, with Warren out of the game, trying to convert this third and six. Four-man rush. Ritter flushed. He's going to try to run. Will he get there? He's going to be marked out short of the marker he's spotting him at the 40 yeah he seven you know again keep in mind he's a freshman he, he puts the ball out a la Russell Wilson but the right foot steps out and when he steps out it's all about where the ball is and he is short by a yard of that first down go for it offense on the field here Look, fickle knows his defense has come up with two big stops they cannot afford to punt this ball away to McKenzie Milton they've got to keep their offense on the field or at least try Thomas and the freshman's going to be wrestled down short and the Knights defense makes a stand and continues a superb performance this evening. You talk about a freshman. How about this freshman right here? Watch him work against Kyle Trout, not give up on the play and then eventually get into that backfield. That's 58. Randy Charlton right there comes up with that play for the UCF defense. Rue freshman beats a senior. Knights will take over. Ready for the holidays here in Orlando. That's outside the basketball arena. Aerial coverage brought by Goodyear. Keep pushing day in and day out on the field and on tires you can trust to help you go the distance. Goodyear, more driven. They keep saying, we want Bama, we want Bama. They're going to get Bama they got them. in that building in basketball <laughs> right. in a couple of weeks. Love it. How many times can you see come up with a stop and keep this lead at 15? You just feel like the Knights are about ready to explode. Milton on a slant. Otis Anderson oh, makes a big hit. Anderson. And Maria is with uh, Mackenzie Milton's Hi, mother. I am. I'm with Teresa Milton, and she's moved from Hawaii to Orlando to be with her son. Now, talk to me about the competitive edge that he has because he's the youngest of four boys. Well, that's because when you're the youngest, like, they're rough on you, and he just is like a gamer. Mm -hmm. What have you noticed about him over the course of the last couple of years? A couple of years, how he matured, and he thinks about everyone but himself and he never lets his competitive edge goes and he never gives up he believes in his team and I also noticed that you guys have the Hawaiian flag here so you take it with it wherever you go you have 20 fans here for McKenzie what is that family like atmosphere like for him there's nothing like Hawaii can I tell you something in Florida I have embraced everyone here like Hawaii embraced our family 30 years ago we moved there we gave birth to four boys there my boys just know that oh hi Tell them what Ohana is. Look at it. 
And her son is gonna be chased and sacked. Ohana means no one's left behind, ever, ever. And this entire group right here, guys, is screaming Ohana behind them, and that is McKenzie's family. There are about 20 of them here to support him, and they travel as much as they can to support one of Hawaii's sons. That's great stuff, Maria. You've got a great spirit. I mean, yeah. you talked to Mackenzie about being roughed up by three older brothers. All of them were two years apart. You can relate in your I family. Can. Your young, your young son Chase. Yeah, he, he gets <laughs> he gets roughed up. Yeah, I, I, he'll be the best of the bunch before <laughs> it's over. What an advantage! Mackenzie said he can now beat his brothers in everything: basketball, golf. He runs the show. Flips it short. Killens breaking free. They're not going to catch him. The explosion you expect from UCF. Touchdown. Ohana, he, they left everybody behind with that run. Make sure he got in, the ball breaks the plane, gets across there before he goes out of bounds. Progressive pylon cam, where was the ball when his foot hits the pylon? Because that puts him out. You won't be able to tell from that low angle, but you could extrapolate from it, maybe the ball did break the plane. Better look here. So he's, well, they're not gonna stop it. They're apparently satisfied it was a touchdown. And there's PAT. This is vintage McKenzie Milton right here. 42 yards. Touchdown. <laughs> Kirk, the Bearcats defense could only hold on for so long. You sensed it. And with their third possession in the third quarter, second touchdown for Killens. And the lead is 22. Yeah, you just can't let nine get out in space when he's got the ball in his hands. It's it's just too tough to leverage that football, and he gets one on one, and he's not going to make a play on him. Casey Milton doing his thing, approaching another 300-yard game. McClelland knocked down short of the 25. It, Cincinnati's actually playing zone. You're going to see Snelson work in here, and when he does, it actually attracts two of the UC de defenders. When they move him into the inside right here, now you've got a defensive end out here, and Michael Pitts trying to stay with a fleet-footed running back. Very tough matchup. Then he makes the, the defensive back Noah Hamlin miss, and Killens is one of the more gifted running backs with his speed, 10-200 speed that there is in the country, and I love that little flip by Milton. Perfect time for Teresa. <laughs> That's a fun crowd. Nobody's had more fun in Orlando than that. No, section. no. And this is a party here. They do a great job creating a party environment for the students and the fans. She didn't mention, but Mackenzie was a youth football teammate of Tua Tungabaloa, strong quarterback heritage in the Hawaiian Islands. Mackenzie didn't play quarterback at that point. It, Tua, that job was to us. You can see the way he could spin it. But uh, then they went on to rival high schools and very supportive of each other. They keep in touch, very proud of the Hawaiian heritage. To a, an almost flawless game. Tied defense gave up some points to the Citadel, but only four incompletions and three touchdowns for Tagovailoa today. Pretty good day. Talk about the rich heritage of Hawaiian quarterbacks. Kenzie proud of it. He could reel off names like Simi Chang, played at Hawaii, Jason Gesser, yeah. Jeremiah Masoli, of course, who went to Oregon. Mariota himself Marcus Marcus was the guy that kind of really elevated to a new level and made all these Hawaiian guys want to play football at Oregon it's like including Tua and McKenzie right. they, they passed on both guys got a good one in Justin Herbert so Milton ends up going all the way to Orlando from Hawaii did you see the little flip I mean it, just a little like he like he's flipping a dart when he threw that that ball He's got a variety of ways to deliver the football, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's got it. It's like a, having five different pitches, you know, for a starting pitcher. Now, the 22-point deficit means that since he is just more desperate than ever to create a downfield shot, Ritter's going to try to move the sticks here with a run. He has to really earn a first down yardage. But can they create something downfield? Yeah, we, we keep talking about that their game plan is more about being able to power that football and if you looked at uh, the beginning of this game, that's who they, that's their identity, Michael Warren and, and setting up play action. But they knew coming in that, that would be tough to be able to score by just marching the ball against this, this athletic defense. That at some point they needed to make some big plays, and now especially down 
big here in this game. Warren, who's had a couple series of breather, he's been banged around pretty good tonight back in, but Kyle Gibson stuffed him. And Randy Shannon at this point, with a comfortable lead, is just thinking, hey, let's keep everything in front of us. Let's not let these backs get behind us. Randy Shannon made a name for himself. The Miami Hurricanes as an assistant coach, a coordinator, even a head coach. He's a guy that stays calm, and there, there were a bit of opportunities with this UCF defense reeling in the first half. Temple had 445 yards and 34 points in the first half against him. Shannon never loses his cool. Very calm, makes his adjustments. And this defense has really been much better after halftime. Warren continues to pound away. It'll be third and short. Yeah, those two safeties, they, they don't fear that the ball getting thrown over their heads at all. I mean, they, they, Grant and Gibson both, 27 and 25, are just, as soon as Ritter puts the ball out there, they're, they're flying down. So and essentially facing a nine-man, eight and nine-man front. And the truck, he's getting a lot of collisions, and the damage is piling up. Warren leaving the game. This would normally be his ball on third and two. Davian Thomas, the 235-pound freshman, is in there. Ritter looking to throw, and it's caught for a first down. In the Knights' territory is Lewis. Heck of a catch here by Lewis. They give Ritter just enough time. It's kind of a, kind of a quick slant, kind of a skinny post there. He puts it up high where Lewis can make a play. It's a nice job going up there. That's a tough matchup against Clark. A must score possession for Cincinnati, you feel. And very short, very short gain by Thomas. Must score and it would help if they could do it quickly. That's the thing with UCF's offense is it's, you, you have to stay within striking distance because they score so fast and have so much potential. You get down by 22 and you into the fourth quarter and really hard to catch up to him. Here comes the pressure again and Ritter's going to be dropped. It's another sack by Titus Davis monster night. I mean well, you talk about effort by Titus Davis. First of all, he's right here. Watch how he works, and then watch how he doesn't give up on the play. The big tight end's actually holding, and he just kind of, as he's falling backwards, he just throws his right arm out, and that was enough to just be able to get shoestring there of Ritter and bring him down. That is relentless effort. This, that is sack with, with his back. His yeah, neck. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like he threw the, his backhand at him. Final minute of the third quarter. Three sacks tonight for Davis. Got a hurry play clock at two. Does he see it? Cincinnati coaches did. Timeout spent. And the Bearcats just trying to chip away at this lead. Fourth quarter coming up after we're from your local ABC stations. Knights adding seven points to their lead here. It's been a frustrating third quarter. For Cincinnati, 47 seconds left in it, but it's another third and long. Better account for Mr. Davis. There is number 10. Looking against that left tackle. Out of the starting blocks. Ritter flush to his right. It's a long way to run for a first down. He takes a big shot. No sliding there. But wow. Gazinski hammers him. It's fourth down, and the ball. I think that ball came out. came out. I don't know if he got it back, but that initial contact, that ball definitely came out. That was a serious collision. It's in the hands of Bam Moore. Flags come out at the end of the play. And the quarterback made a decision not to slide, and he paid a price. I'm just glad he got up. There's still flags being thrown. Tempers flaring along the near sideline. Was the receiver Khalil Lewis involved with some Knights players? Watch his hit. Watch the ball pop out right at the collision. Oh my gosh, that's a heavy hit by the linebacker. 
Looks like his right arm got around the football, though, as he's laying there. I don't know how he had the presence of I don't either. look for the ball. I don't either. Boom. I mean, you, you're right. He wasn't thinking of sliding. He, he, he was trying to pick up that first down. There are other dudes I would pick to, to run into on this defense besides Jasinski, though. Run on the field. The runner was stopped short of the line to gain. After the play, we have two unsportsmanlike fouls on the offense. Number 74 for pulling a player off the pile. And after the play, unsportsmanlike foul on Cincinnati as well. Both those fouls will be in first. It'll be fourth down. It'll be fourth down in a mile now, rather than fourth and short. A pair of penalties. Fickle looking stunned. And that just negates a tremendous effort by Ritter. You see if the ball was loose. You see if the runner was down by contact. Well, the ball did come out. It looks yeah. like Ritter maintained control, as you pointed out. What a hit. Yeah, Chizinski, veteran, inside linebacker. Big shot. And clearly the ball is out, but as we talked about in the last replay, I think he did have that somehow the presence of mind with that right hand to get it. You'll see it get it around the football and, and to me not targeting because it's Ritter the quarterback who dropped his head at the last minute and kind of created the, the helmet to helmet collision there right here I think Jaziski was kind of sort of aiming below the helmet you admire the toughness Again. of the quarterback on a third and long but wow that is a guy Roswell Georgia it's a tough part South Georgia football player middle linebacker who endured a a winless season as a freshman and, and has come back and now part of a 22 game winning streak and you can hear in his voice in Titus Davis yesterday what this opportunity meant to them and they're playing like it means a lot yeah when you go you go winless <laughs> and then you back it up with a with an undefeated season and you're undefeated again I mean it, it means a lot to you you've experienced the other side remember Kirk they came in off the heels of a successful season UCF was winning bowl games so that winless season was a complete shock to the system. That's what they, they got Ferguson where he grabbed one of the UCF defenders and threw him off. Looked like Keenan Johnson maybe. Well they're going to review the, the part about the ball coming out and the runner being down by contact. The other stuff's not reviewable so I, I don't know how they're going to change this from but even though it was recovered you marks these these dead ball fouls off and it's going to be back in Cincinnati territory as Warren may finally have had enough final seconds of this third quarter he's headed in to be checked out Warren has earned all of his 81 yards on 18 carries hasn't he Maria yeah and he was holding that left shoulder wouldn't even stretch out his arm completely was telling the trainers he was okay and they really had to convince him to go back into the locker room just now and we'll keep you updated on his status to return to the game and look at Ritter who has come out of that tough collision okay over there trying to give his own lineman a pep talk and by the way that as a freshman quarterback you, you want to talk about some of the ways to earn respect from the upperclassmen you take a hit like that and you come up from it that, that's that's a heck of a way to earn some to earn some respect he's he's played hard tonight and what a growing opportunity for him to experience this defense and this atmosphere for Ritter it's a lengthy conversation trying to sort things out so until they do that they can't march off these penalties here's one more look at one of the biggest collisions you're going to see in college football this year and the ball did come out and looks like the right arm of Ritter is able to collect it yeah I don't know how you could rule anything other than yeah. retaining possession mm -hmm. not really sure why it's taken this long to sort it out but then the loss of poise after the play by the Bearcats offensive players may have spoiled a chance to keep this drive going cut into the lead They got the wave going here. I haven't seen the wave probably a decade. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, he said it's a party environment here. <laughs> it sure is. 44,206. They've had this on campus stadium about a decade. It's a great idea. It's the kind of thing that they've had a hard time getting done at some other schools in Florida. It's great. Much better than playing in a, in a giant pro stadium. Yeah. This has been a tough ticket. 
UCF does win this game, they'll clinch the AC or AAC East Division. Head off to play USF next Friday on the road. That's a great rivalry. If that was a great game last year. It was. That was one of the best games of the year. And you'd expect the Bulls will bring their best effort on their home field against UCF next week as well. It's a Friday. After review, the ruling on the field has changed. The offensive player fumbled the ball and it was recovered by UCF. Oh. The UCF ball. The two fouls from sportsmanlike conduct on number 75 and number number one of Cincinnati will still be enforced. 30 yards, and that is the first unsportsmanlike foul for each player. Well, I'm surprised at the ruling. We'll bring in Dave Katai. From our angles, it, it, it sure looked like Ritter had his hand on the football while he was down. Well, After that long review day, they've changed it. Well, what I'm seeing here is, there's no, to me, there's no clear recovery of the ball, which means you have to stay on the call in the field. I don't see anything here that is clear to reverse this call. I mean, if he's down on the he ground and has the, his hand the on ball. the ball. Had the ball. Uh, and he's got a big pile up there, too. He, I mean, eventually, uh, UCF came out of it. But, well, okay, the ball's loose. He's on the ground, and then right here, he pulls secu it in. secures the ball in his yeah. hand. I mean, there's a bunch of arm. Jasinski's got his big left arm, and they're trying to pry it loose. And after the scrum, they're going to they rip it, rip out, it out, out. Right there, there is no clear recovery. You see two opponents over the ball. When there's no clear recovery, you have to go with a call on the field. So UCF gets the football back. Anderson with the carry. And Cincinnati's last four possessions, Kirk, have been three fumbles and a turnover on downs. Not a team that does well in the turnover category. UCF's going to win that category for an 11th straight game. Yeah, they, they're one of the best in the country at the turnover margin. In fact, plus 14 coming into the night. Explosive offense, hard knocking defense for the Knights tonight. They lead it after three, 28 to six. Final quarter from Orlando coming up. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Singing, we will rock you. Except for the fourth quarter on Saturday Night Football, presented by Walmart. And this bounce house brigade engineering student there excellent great yeah that's very good effort excellent signs this morning on game day out world record did you survive i had a little fun with you it was good and let's begin the fourth quarter chewing on the clock with mccray the margin may be 22 it may seem safe but in this era when ucf is perpetually you know battling for respect we know the strength is scheduled down there in 119th Cincinnati is ranked in the playoff committee rankings and this would be you know, their best win so far So it's important for them in their case to yeah. continue to build this lead Let's hear from Tua Tagovailoa and his fellow Hawaiian quarterback Me and Mackenzie we text, you know, we still text up to this point um, We support each other, you know, we played ever since we were little We played football ever since we were little with and against, you know, and then now you see the success that McKenzie has at UCF. Um, I couldn't be more proud and happy for him. So um, I do know he understands that Hawaii is behind him as well. So Mariota winning the Heisman is the first Hawaiian to do so. You figure Tunga Balo is a clear favorite. Maybe McKenzie Milton certainly belongs in New York as a potential Heisman finalist. Yeah. You look at his numbers last year and what he's doing this year, and he has a very strong argument. You'd have to look at Kyler Murray at Oklahoma. Another quarterback, Dwayne Haskins, has put up some remarkable numbers. So there, there's some very uh, deserving candidates out there. But Mackenzie Milton, man, he he's had a what an incredible career. And the good thing is he's only a junior. You know? Absolutely, you know, he's he's had to do things a little bit differently tonight. And really, it's been more about the passing game and location of some of these deep balls. Noah Hamlin comes in for Gilbert, and right away they locate it, find that one-on-one -on -one matchup. Get the ball downfield to Nixon. I love this little flip. Sees that his guy Killens has got a chance to get out in space and outrun the defense to the end zone. So, you know, he processes information quickly and makes good decisions. Three more touchdown passes tonight. Also ran for a touchdown. Besides having those three older brothers that roughed him up and toughened him up, McKenzie was talking about the, the football culture in Hawaii, a very physical brand of football. As a young guy, a smaller guy, he was given no mercy. He was banged up, roughed around by much older, bigger players. He said 
you had to earn your respect. And That's great. Once you're in the family, the brotherhood, they love you. They yeah. do anything for you, but you got to earn your way in, huh? You, you, if you survive that, you're <laughs> obviously much better for it. Makes him the player that he is today. Cray is the back on third and five. And Milton looking to throw and now scramble. He's got room in front, and he's got the first down, and he's into the red zone. Hurts you a lot of ways. The Milton brothers, again, the youngest of four, two years apart, all of them. Two-on-two -two football, tackle football in the front yard. Yeah, I can, like you said, I can totally relate having four boys of my own. The, the, the youngest guy gets roughed up the most and ends up being rewarded for it down the road, just like McKenzie. Play action, and the touchdown. Oh, at the fingertips, Colubiali had it in his hands. An easy catch, couldn't hold on. Boy, they snuck Kalumi Alley right behind the coverage, behind the linebacker, White. I mean, it's, oh, it's perfectly, <laughs> perfectly designed. And he is, he, he has great hands. He does. It's just one of those plays where the ball, you know, I don't know if he started to get just too excited about too having a touchdown. Yeah. He's made so many tough like, catches in traffic. It's like the year. ground ball that's hit right to you is sometimes <laughs> tougher than going and making a play in the hole. The whole crowd just groaned when they showed the replay on the screen. McCray cuts it back, knocked down near the marker at the nine by White. You know, the, the depth of this backfield, you think of Adrian Killens when you think of their backfield, but we've seen Greg McCray the last couple weeks step up, and he actually leads him in rushing. McGowan can get in there, Otis Anderson. Four different backs can run the football, and they all bring something a little bit different to the table. As you said, it was the pass game to set up the run, not the typical balance this offense shows. Only 58 yards on the ground. Yeah, talking about an offense averaging 271 running and, and throwing. McCray cuts it back and is knocked down, but not before crossing the plane. And the lights. White lights for this team tonight, and they have seized it. Hit 30 points for a 23rd consecutive game. UCF has blown it open. Wazoo just keeps rolling along, and so does UCF. We need now 29 here early fourth quarter, and the party shows uh, no signs of letting up. Nice. And we'll leave it right there. Fair catch made. Curtis Wilson, the All-State bus, making the journey to O-Town here. What's your mayhem moment? But the All-State mayhem moment is another Big 12 game. What an exciting game. Came down to which quarterback has that opportunity. It's Will Greer. Where's David Sills? Oh, it's knocked down by Oklahoma State, and they hold on to pull off the upset. Number nine tested and lost. Keep in mind, that, that could shake things up. They host Oklahoma the day after Thanksgiving. And if they knock off Oklahoma at home, Big 12 is eliminated. That's what those are the kind of things UCF needs to be able to climb up and, and give them a realistic chance of, of maybe getting into discussion. Their fans are very aware of that, believe me. Ritter incomplete as the receiver Lewis fell down. Bama against the Citadel. Nick Saban will be upset. They give up 17. Notre Dame very impressive. They knock out Eric Dungy and win 36 to three. And I think the real winner possibly could have been could be Washington State. With again, depending on what happens with West Virginia and Oklahoma on Friday and, and, and next week, if at home in Morgantown, if they were to give Oklahoma all they can handle, or if Oklahoma eventually were to slip up, that could, that could potentially be big for Washington State. Good year bringing you. Those rankings as Ritter puts it in the flat and trying to escape is Thomas. Well, Davo Sweeney had fun with this. He said that it's it's Alabama driving the lead bus, and then it's the 
Roy bus for rest of y'all. Oh, no, no. He, Chase the Tide. Dabo's driving the bus. They should have their own he, bus. He needs, to get, he needs to get in the Nick Saban's bus. UCF logo in the, the back end of the bus needing some upsets in front of them. They need, they need a little bit of help. And they can I don't, get it, the ceiling, get in the top ten. I don't week. know if it's necessarily about them as a team. And it's more about them as a, their resume with the strength of schedule and who they have played. But as a team, well, you could make a strong case for them. Ritter fires wide open as Lewis battles hard and gets a first down across the 44. And outside of those top, those really top three or four teams as we sit here right now with Alabama and Clemson and Notre Dame and Michigan, after that, well, you, you could put UCF on the field, any of those teams that are from five down to ten and on a neutral field, they'd have a chance to compete with them. Ritter complete. And Lewis trying to escape. Now Mackenzie Milton, some of the frustration as Lewis appears to be hurt over there. Frustration of being overlooked and he feels undervalued kind of came forward. He's not a guy that really pops off often as Lewis appears to be in a lot of pain. Well, we'll continue that thought after this break as they look at the top receiver on this Bearcats team. Khalil Lewis helped off talking about Mackenzie Milton's comments this week about one of the rare apples to apples comparisons between the Knights and the teams that are in the playoff mix both UCF and Notre Dame played Pittsburgh two weeks apart late September early October second and one for this Bearcats offense McClelland is the back and McClellan breaks free runs hard and gets a first down and this is what Milton had to say we, we looked at both of these games in terms of our prep you look at the pit film against us and Notre Dame you can't tell me Notre Dame is a better team than us Notre Dame scored late to beat Pitt he's right and you hear the committee talk about how it was great for them to pull it out what we did to Pitt which was dominate them, route them here, 45 to 14, out gaining by about 300 yards. Notre Dame had to score a winning touchdown at home two weeks later in the final six minutes to win the game. So you're looking for anything here for you, UFC player, fan, and, and try to say, why don't we get treated the same way as some of the other teams? Fair point? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think if you're a UCF player or coach, you know, you, you have to come up with different ways to try to find an argument that that helps you try to state your case and that would be one and then if you're a Notre Dame fan you would say well you guys played Temple and gave up seven almost 700 yards of offense to Temple so there you can go back and forth on it all I know is this just being here tonight seeing this atmosphere for me and I've been very real with their chances all along they hate me for it but it's just <laughs> the way I've, I've seen it their offense can play with about anybody like that that's real uh, that, that's true, not just the quarterback, but the scheme itself. The speed that they have around a veteran quarterback in McKenzie Milton. The defense has played well tonight. And as I said a little bit earlier, Chris, after the top four teams, you get five to ten. You can almost just throw them into a bag and pull a name out. And I don't know why UCF wouldn't be able to be in the mix with those teams. Ritter spun around and dropped for a loss. And defense has been a big story tonight. And it certainly helped earn them respect when the committee gets together in Grapevine, Texas, and produces their rankings. We'll see if UCF has impressed them and moved up. Tuesday, the exclusive reveal, 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. You know, the committee ranks Cincinnati as the 24th best team coming in. And the margin is 29. Ritter escapes. He's a, hey, this time he's, he's like, where's 56? He's like, where's, where's five, six? <laughs> that, time, that time he chose to slide. SEC with six teams in the CFP rankings. American with two. You, you would think more practically, Chris, UCF probably ends up outside of the top four unless there's total chaos up above them. And then somebody's going to get the short straw and have to play these guys in one of those New Year's Six Bowl games. Auburn found out that was no fun. Yep. Third and three. And first down and more for Thomas. Big freshman still rumbling, diving, knocked out short of the goal line. 
Just want to make sure he didn't throw that football into the end zone. I'm sure he had possession of that as he went out of bounds. He, I, I really like this guy. Got some size at 6'2", 235 pounds. Shows some acceleration. And he did lunge for the pile on the ball. Came out of his hands. Yeah. And I could have buzzed down. Cincinnati's got the football running a play, so no chance to review it now. And Thomas just barrels down near the goal line. Still no in. signal. Yeah, touchdown. Yeah, he, I'll tell you, as they continue to play these last few games and into their postseason, as a true freshman, he'll get more and more carries to go along with McClellan and Warren. Good looking back. And Jared Dokes, their leading rusher from a year ago, he has a sports hernia injury that required surgery. He hasn't played at all this season. It's still a pretty deep running back core here. Fabian Thomas, his fifth touchdown. Cole Smith's had that rugged night and is able to knock one through the uprights. 9-22 to play. UCF's lead is 22. <laughs> it's a massive camp of 68,000. They not have fun. This is the UCF Spirit Splash. Guy in the right there. Big fella. Get out of his way. <laughs> Josh Heupel there hyping the crowd up. It's kind of a homecoming event. They, they brought that spirit to the, the game day set this morning. Huge sure turnout. It's great. And the bounce house is, in fact, bouncing, bouncing. so much for that beverage <laughs> students spread at both ends of this field made noise enjoyed themselves it's the home finale many of these folks will head down to Tampa and try to take over the stadium of the USF Bulls it's a Friday night game on the other side of the American Conference, Houston and Memphis will square off for the right to play UCF in the championship game Houston lost their quarterback which is a yeah tough thing King injured out yeah. of the year in the first catch but if it is Memphis that comes through that game Memphis and UCF played a thriller a one-point victory by the Knights another reminder about Monday Night Football Tess Jason Booger Lisa Chiefs and Rams a great one in Los Angeles on ESPN former Bearcat Travis Kelsey catch some passes from Mahomes in LA Big time matchup on a Monday night. So UCF back to work. Defense giving up the first points tonight. It was a sack of Milton on the night's first offensive play that produced the only Cincinnati points until that score. McGowan knocked down. He's a guy who's had a He's become kind of semi-famous for us doing nothing. The starer. He was at game day. He was. He doesn't have to say anything. He just looks at people. People that's coming the, over, they the want to take animated their, that he's been. Look at that. Can I have my picture? <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'll give you a smirk. Everybody could be famous for something. <laughs> he's working it though. Get a phone number or something out of it. <laughs> Second and three. McGowan again picks his way for a first down. Well, we, we saw Ritter get off to a really impressive start. Milton struggled early, but the Pacific Life game summary shows that Milton has turned that around. Not monster numbers. Did run for a touchdown. Three touchdown three, passes. Three. Ran, ran one in and. Not not his typical dominant night, but I think you know UC's defense has had something to do with that. They, they came in with a an aggressive attack, an aggressive group that's had a pretty good year for them. In fact, for them to get to nine and one, I, I think their defense in this second year under Luke Fickle and Marcus Freeman, you know, they, they they do a pretty good job of trying to challenge every inch of this field. And UCF has found ways to make them pay for it. McGowan's getting loose and busting down to the 40-yard line. Fresh legs as they rotate in backs. Yeah, and he's known as the power back at 210 pounds. Very strong this time. He just has room to run. Nice blocking up front. Open that up for, for him. And instead of after a first down immediately at the line of scrimmage, we're actually able to get a replay in because they have slowed things down considerably now trying to work that game clock. 
you get a tired defense that had a bunch of guys beating them getting out of the game and you got a guy like McGowan come in it that was just his fifth carry he says let me let me have the rock he's, he's operating in a different gear two back looks being a different gears Killens is in the game he scored a couple touchdowns tonight trying to get loose again finds a crease and cuts back they'll be caught from behind but a nice run down near the 20. Uh, how about his vision and then lateral quickness 164 pounds just patiently waiting because he accelerates so quickly that he trusts that speed and he's just kind of moving laterally waiting patiently and then boom he hits that crease he's one of those guys every time he touches the ball you, if you're defending him you're holding your breath hoping that you can leverage him to try to slow him down one guy can't make a play on him I like how you pointed out his instincts and even though he's a little dude holds on to the ball hasn't fumbled at all this season still a two back look and Milton was looking to pitch it just wasn't there so he just gets down and yeah, they defended that very well Clements actually took the quarterback there and had another safety that was able to stay out on the the, the pitch man that was Wiggins good discipline that time by the Bearcats it's not very often you hear a single clap at a Saturday night game <laughs> The students are still here. Some of the other folks have decided that uh, maybe it's a good idea to beat the traffic. Do you want to give some of that a little clap up here? Second and 13. McGowan running right. And it'll be brought down at the 15. It'll be third down. Oh, college football playoff. Talk about the potential shakeup of the rankings, LeBron's reaction to the Lakers. It's on ESPN after the Arizona Washington State game, Sports Center. Now, the Knights, no urgency, no tempo, thankfully, at this point, just content to run the play clock down, milk this lead, and run the win streak to 23. Milton scrambling away and swings it along the sidelines, almost intercepted. James Wiggins was over in the neighborhood. I think he caught the ball. Yeah. Yeah, just out of, bounds. out of bounds. Really athletic safety. He just couldn't get the right foot down. But Sidearm delivery. Yeah. yeah. Good, very good athlete. Wiggins is a guy. that right foot That Boy, just, just missed it. He's a dude that made that, that walk-off interception in overtime. The beat SMU made an interception on the pylon against Ohio University. The big comeback for you. Without it, without his two plays, they're, they're not in contention for the division coming into this game. Right from 33. And an angle. Knocks it right through. Big edge in the kicking game tonight for UCF. And they stretch the lead 38-13. The stair guy is clapping. Just Black Friday, day after Thanksgiving, UCF travels over to Tampa. You can see it on ESPN at 4.15 Eastern time. After that, UCF on to the championship game in the AAC. They'll take on the winner of Houston and Memphis. That game's here on ABC at noon Eastern time. So that'll be for the division title. And we'll be next in line if the Bulls can't break the streak to stand in UCF's way. So late in the season, short week, never easy. As McClellan, who's taking some big hits tonight as a returner, has stopped short of the 20. Matt Berry in the Ford wrap up show after the game. Let's figure UCF, all the energy that build up, the hype that went into this, and the positive result. They'll be able to get back to work very quickly and point towards Friday in Tampa. They forgot about Bama for the moment. They just want respect. Yeah. And I think they can earn some tonight. Yeah, no doubt. They took advantage of a, of a huge stage here this weekend and good opponent in Cincinnati and put a nice, solid victory together. For Ritter, is going to have a pretty solid career. It's a learning experience in defeat tonight. 
On the road, he was pressured by a pass rush that bothered him all night. Took some really hard hits. But 11 of 25, not what he'd hoped for, certainly doesn't have a touchdown pass. Made some big runs to extend drives in the first half. Yeah, actually ended up carrying the ball tonight 20 times. For 70 yards. Got a good future, though. Oh, man. I, I, I completely agree with he and some of these young skill players around him chance for the first time to see this kind of environment only help them in the program as they move forward. The kid is number 10, Charles McClellan. Still, I mean, if you're Luke Fickle and you're still building your program, one area he, he clearly is going to have to continue to recruit. You touched on the whole league. Maybe need to address this area. And that, the offensive line play. He knows that, absolutely. It was a tough night for the truck. He was banged up. Various body shots delivered to him. 81 yards rushing for Warren. Thomas back in the game on third and eight. And it's a jump ball. Broken up. Brandon Moore, they call him Bam in coverage. Yeah, Bam, Bam was really in position. And one thing you can say about Randy Shannon's defense is he's gotten pressure up front. And these guys, these corners, Clark and Moore, have done a really good job. I would throw Cossie 21 in there as well. Cossie's done a really nice job a lot of times on a slot receiver. They've been on islands. They locate the football, and they go up and knock it down. Nelson has been busy tonight. He was the target for McKenzie early. He's back as the returner. Still wants to make a return, even way ahead of the fourth quarter. A couple flags come out. Three of them, in fact. Bearcats, by the way, are going to head home. They play ECU in their finale also on Friday. They'll be playing for a 10 win Turn season. Illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 87. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. 10 win season's a big deal for a group that struggled to four and eight last year in Fickle's first season. Sunday NFL countdown tomorrow morning on ESPN, 10 o'clock Eastern time. Plenty of breakdown of that Monday night collision between Mahomes and Goff, Chiefs and the Rams in Los Angeles. It's also on the ESPN app. American, by the way, had 18 guys drafted in last year's NFL draft, 33 the last two years combined. That's on par with the Big 12 Power Five Conference. And apparently McKenzie Milton's night is done. Apparently a Mac Jr. backup quarterback. Redshirt freshman has come into the game. He got the start against ECU and Milton wasn't healthy. The range of this offense may be his someday, but Milton of course has another year. Dontavious Thompson, redshirt freshman. So McKenzie's night is finished. Kirk, 13 of 25. Modest production by his standards, but pretty efficient. Yeah, and, and again, I think you have to look at the defense that, that he faced, the, the way they were able to get pressure on him at times. He missed a few throws. I'm sure he'd love to have him back, but overall, a very solid night. Kind of what you come to expect from McKenzie Milton. Maria will try to make her way over and get the postgame comments of Milton. See if he thinks UCF used this national stage to make a saber that was strong enough tonight. Thompson getting the turn. Stretches just short of the marker. Getting a look at Mac Aid, who, as you said, is a freshman. Milton, as a junior, back for another year. And to me, as, as this program has grown and, and become more recognizable as a brand, Max development will be crucial because McKenzie Milton has so much to do with where this this program is the way he plays how consistent he is and after he leaves for a year from now and they they have to come back and try to continue to grow and build this isn't just a two or three year thing they, they want to be around for a long time and that position in this system is is crucial because he does so many things you think you'd be able to recruit a quarterback here. They certainly have no problem recruiting speed at skill. We talked about the need to continue to develop offensive line strength and depth. 
It's fourth down, and Hypo didn't want to have to punt, but now we'll send out the colorful Mr. Loudermilk. How about the job that Josh Heupel's done in this first year as a, as a head coach here at, at UCF? I mean, you talk about pressure, filling the shoes of, of Scott Frost and that magical year that they had last year and the chemistry between Scott Frost and those players. And he goes to Lincoln, and Heupel's got to step into that, and he's kind of created his own identity with this team and still clearly very successful. Loudermilk drives the ball deep. Knight will be knocked down. Loudermilk usually likes to celebrate a great pump with one of those trademark moves. I don't know if he feels like it's been that kind of night of anything worth celebrating. We haven't seen the home run swing, the golf swing. Now, he, what, the hair transformation is interesting. George O'Leary, when he was coach here, allowed no facial hair and no hair below the collar. But O'Leary moved on, and, and old Loudermilk hadn't had a haircut since. Somebody tweeted out, I don't know how he appreciate that, but it's kind of like the development of, of man kind of in reverse. <laughs> that transformation. <laughs> you with me? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, I, you, you approve of the look? You like it? I don't care. You can wear whatever you want. Yeah. He's a good punter. Yeah, Maria was out playing golf with him. He's, he's, a, he, he's, a, he's a fun guy. Maria, you just spent a, a morning with Mr. Laddermilk on the golf course. Yeah, and I still can't hit a golf ball to save my life. And no, you're to teach we got to talk you about that? your technique. You're, you're I look like Charles Barkley. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, you're an athlete, ooh. too. I know. Charles on the golf course is not who you want to emulate, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy, he's, he's a, a character. character yeah. He is a character, I tell you. Characters are good. We like characters. As long as you do your job. Thomas spinning free, and the young guy making use of some playing time late in this game to show what he can do. Young, young, young fella looking for some future reps. Looking good running the football tonight. I like how hard he runs. But this, this night's defense will for many be a pleasant surprise. They match up better against this kind of an offense, the kind of offense that Pitt brought against them. Then they, they do kind of the kind of grind out, be, spread be team physical. Tonight. Well, I think that's why the Memphis potential matchup yeah. could be good in the, in the championship game if Memphis is able to win. Thomas, he shows some wiggle for a big man. He really does. And that should be it. So on this national stage with all the buzz and all the buildup and the bright lights, Game day's presence this morning on senior night. Guys like Jasinski there, Titus Davis. A sweet and satisfying victory as the winning streak, longest in the country, reaches 23. A 25 point victory over the toughest or at least highest rated conference opponent they faced this season. At USF and Raymond James Stadium. It's fun tonight. And they have clinched the AAC East Division one more time. Will defend their conference title against the winner of that Houston-Memphis game, but not before they take on the Bulls down the road in Tampa on Friday over on ESPN. Still perfect and a satisfying night for the defensive side of the ball. Meanwhile, Maria said about with the quarterback. All right, McKenzie, you came into this game and you said you guys have plenty to prove. What do you think you showed tonight on this field? You know, a lot of talk has been about our defense. They only got one uh, offensive touchdown during the game. They played their butts off. Um, you know, we, we beat a good football team tonight. When we clinch our side of the division, we're going to play in another conference championship. So just, it is what it is. The eyes of the college football world are on you guys. You are the primetime game. College game day came to your city Saturday morning. State your case to the committee right now and why you belong. I think we show week in and week out why we belong. Um, all we can do, focus on is going 1-0. and I'm just proud of our guys. Um, Cincinnati played a hell of a game. It was just a good ball game. We talked to your mom up in the stands, and um, the one word I came away with was Ohana. And that's the family that binds you together. How does that affect the way that you play and the person that you are on this field? Yeah, all the, all the guys on the team, they're my brothers. You know, I play for the name on the back of my jersey. Um, carry it with pride. I'm just proud of my guys. Thanks for your time, McKin. Thank you. We're up at the 808, the area code in Hawaii. Very proud of that, as he should be. Very, very poised leader to this team. Good team effort, all three phases tonight for the Knights. Yep. Complimentary football. 
Final 38 to 13. UCF still unbeaten. Still a thorn in the side of the establishment. Still trying to make their case. Game produced by Bill Bunnell, directed by Derek Mobley. We thank our entire talented crew in Orlando. We'll see you next Saturday night at the Coliseum. Southern California against Notre Dame. Arizona and Washington State in action over on ESPN. The Ford Wrap-Up Show. Let's go to Matt Berry.